join the home and away voice of Atlantic Sports. Here's Tom Robinson. Thank you very much, and a good evening from Creston Atlantic. And uh, Creston in a girl boy doubleheader tonight as the JV game just completed. Atlantic JV victorious 40 to 30. In that contest tonight, Tom Robinson with you alongside Cody Weaver running the camera. We'll hear from Cody as well here throughout the contest to see the Trojans and their road to gold out warming up right now. And uh, Crest at home white also uh, warming up. As you look at the Panthers coming in, uh, they are hungry for a win. They fell short to Des Moines Christian back on November 18th, 64-30. Uh, to 30. Lost to winners at 56-29. to 29. And Ottawa Valley, 68-47. to 47. Carlisle beat to the Panthers, 77-41. to 41. And St. Albert over the uh, Panthers, 46-27. Last uh, Tuesday night. Atlantic tonight, they'll have a Shenandoah next week on the 13th. Meanwhile, the Trojans have won a two straight. They were three and two on the year, and the two losses were very close to a good Glenwood and ADM team. In fact, ADM jumped into the rankings this week in Class 3A. Atlantic started off the season with a 57 to 49 win over Dennis and Slenswig, and they lost to Glenwood 48-45. They led until a 1:30 to play there in that contest, and Glenwood able to get the win over Atlantic at Atlantic. That was on December 2nd. They followed that up the next day with a loss to ADM 47 to 40. But since then, Atlantic on Tuesday beat Clarinda 52 to 35. And they downed ACGC last night in a makeup game 47 to 13. So here we are at Creston here for this one uh, this evening. Broadcast are brought to you by Olson's Outdoor Power, your one stop service and equipment shop with locations in Atlantic and Carroll. First Whitney Bank, they're the only bank you'll ever need. First Whitney Bank. Body Basic, call 254-BODY to get your body back to the basics. And the Seed Pros, by your side to maximize yields from the word go. Your Pioneer Pros, John Becker, Mark Finn, Tiger, Gary Dinklum, and Nick Knudsen. Also brought to you by Second Street Auto, your transmission pros and Cass Health. Neighbors caring for neighbors. Outfitters Plus Outlet Store, your home for personalized sports apparel in Atlantic. And the Super Bowl. Grab the gang and head of the Super Bowl for Globe Bowling every Friday and Saturday night. Sweat a safe, reliable sweater for all your transportation needs. And Stein Seed. Stein has yield. Contact Darren Petty, your local Stein representative. High V, your bakery, deli, grocery, meat department, and pharmacy. Always there for you, your Atlantic High V. Aiken Building Center with a pro shop in Atlantic. And Community First Credit Union, your community credit union. Grow with us in Atlantic Ag and Auto. Your locally owned full line CarQuest retail store in Atlantic. Had a chance to catch up with it. Atlantic head coach Dan Vargas and our coaches show is brought to you by Outfitters Plus Outlet Store, your home for personalized Trojan apparel in Atlantic. We'll have a visit with Coach Vargas and right after this. Outfitters Plus. From start to finish, let Aiken Design Center help you with your kitchen or bathroom ideas. For new designs or remodels, Aiken Design Center will work with you or your contractor to make your dream a reality. If you're not sure what you want, stop into our showroom so our custom designers can help you find what will suit your needs as well as your budget. The Aiken Design Center staff is committed to quality design while meeting your needs. Stop into Aiken today to find out how we can help. Plus in Atlantic. The pregame brought to you by Outfitters Plus Outlet Store, your home for Trojan Apparel. We're joined by Atlantic Head Girls Basketball Coach Dan Vargas. And both teams warming up, getting ready for this one here tonight between Atlantic and Crest and back on the road here. And Coach, uh, pretty good week going. Tuesday's win over Clarendon in impressive fashion. And then uh, last night holding uh, ACGC to just, what, 13 points. Uh, in the game last night, so uh, talk about let's talk about Thursday night and uh, what impressed you here. Yeah, I, I thought our girls uh, came out and brought good energy. Um, that's been something that we've been working on is intensity, energy, effort, uh, making sure we're staying consistent in those things. Um, you know, you can always clean up X's and O's. That, that's something you can do in practice every day. Uh, but but to bring consistent energy. Um, every night that that's something that has to be taught as well. And, and so that's been a big focus for us. But our, our girls have been uh, doing a very good job of that. Um, you know, last year I know we had some issues when we had back-to-back -back games and things like that or, or short time on recovery that uh, maybe we'd come out a little bit flat. And I thought we've come out very strong these, these last few games. Um, you know, honestly, all season we've come out strong. So I've uh, been very happy with that. Our, our rebounding has been very good. Uh, we got after it last night and, and controlled the, the glass. 
uh, and then turn turnovers into points. And that was a big difference was getting the, the ball in, in the paint after turnovers, getting easy buckets and not settling for outside jumpers. So uh, we had, we had a, a great all-around performance offensively and, and defensively, and it all started on that defensive end. Well, you carry that momentum into the game tonight here at Crest. And talk about uh, facing the Panthers. Uh, what are you going to be uh, seeing here? Yeah, they're, they're a little bit different than they've been the last couple of years. Uh, they've lost some high-quality players. They still have some good athletes. Um, Doran Pop is a good basketball player. Uh, she's leading them in, in points at about 15 a game, but uh, she's one of those kids that she can score 30 on a night. You know, it's not something that she can't do. So I, I think that she'll be somebody that we got to make sure we focus on. You lose track of her, um, she'll make you pay for it. Not only that, but she'll get you in foul trouble in the process. Uh, she'll get to the line. Uh, very solid rebounder. She's averaging about eight a game. Uh, so she wants to go get rebounds, get putbacks get to the basket. Uh, the outside is not her forte. She prefers to get inside. In fact, their, their top two uh, or three scorers have not made a three this season. Mm-hmm. So um, inside game is a big thing for them, but they're a little bit different. They, they've been playing some zones still. Uh, I've seen a little bit of 2-3, some 1-3-1 one, one, sagging down a little bit, uh, but just different personnel than they've had over the last couple of years. What would be the keys to success tonight, Coach? Well, we got to keep getting better on the turnovers and clean up our passing. Uh, we, we've had some, some phases where we get into a game, get in a little bit of a lull, turn the ball over, and keep the game closer than maybe it needs to be, um, or spot the other team a little bit of a run. So I, I think the biggest thing uh, is just staying disciplined. You know, move the ball, uh, continue to shoot with confidence, get the ball inside. We can't be afraid of Pop in the middle. She's six foot. She can block shots, but mm-hmm. um, she's only averaging about a block a game. So uh, you're going to get your shot blocked. That's part of basketball. But you got to go inside, get the ball in, get the ball out, um, take care of it, stay clean, and then obviously keep bringing the defensive intensity. You know, if we, we take care of those things, uh, we'll find ourselves in a pretty good spot at the end of the game. Coach Vargas, and always appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Best of luck tonight. We'll talk to you afterwards. Excellent. Thank you very much, Tom. We'll be back with the starting lineups and the first Whitney Bank opening tip-off right here on 95.7 FM and live video streamed at westerniowatoday.com. Outfitters Plus. Outfitters Plus in Atlantic is making it easier for teams, coaches, groups, and you to host your group's orders online with their online store. Custom printed shirts, sweatshirts, all of your team apparel. Outfitters will design the graphics, post them on the web, give you the link to share with your team or group, and they can order themselves all online. No more order forms to lose, sizes to keep track of, or money to hold on to. Let Outfitters Plus set up an online store for your team or group today. Give them a call at 243-4379. That's 243-4379. Outfitters Plus in Atlantic. When you need parts or tools for your shop, you'll find it at CarQuest and Atlantic Ag and Auto, your only locally owned parts resource in Atlantic. We have shop air compressors, tools, air tanks, and welding supplies. We can make hydraulic hoses in-house in minutes. As the cold weather takes its toll on engine batteries, we have in stock batteries for big cats to cub cadets. We can get you started. Before or after hours, Atlantic Ag and Auto is your full-service CarQuest parts store. We're on the corner of 7th Street across from the Lindemann Tractor and here to serve you, the customer. After years of wondering why I see more runners than other athletes, I figured it out. Well, a sophomore hurdler explained it to me. This is Dr. Fritz Beyer of Body Basics Chiropractic, and he told me since my hips started acting up, I lost one second from my time. One second in a 55-second race is less than 2%, but he knew it instantly because the stopwatch told him. In other sports, there's not a stopwatch to tell you when the nagging injury takes 2% from you. To make sure you're giving your 100%, call 254-BODY to get your body back to the basics. Cass Health in Atlantic, Iowa is a nationally recognized hospital, and we are proud of the awards and all of our recent accomplishments. But do you know what drives us to be the very best? You. We're passionate about helping our patients heal and feel their very best at any age and any stage of life. Cass Health, neighbors caring for neighbors. Credit approval, equal housing opportunity. Welcome back to Crest and Tom Robinson and Cody Weaver here as the Atlantic Trojans and the Crest and Panthers face off on a girl boy doubleheader in the JV game. The girls won 40 to 30. Boys playing a different facility and not too sure what that score uh, was for that one, but we'll get that to you when the boys take the floor here a little bit later on. The Atlantic enters a contest having won two straights. Uh, that was Tuesday against Clorinda. And then they came back and beat ACGC last night in a great defensive effort. Her coach, 
Dan Vargas and talk about holding the Chargers to just 13 points last night. This team has played some great defense uh, here this season. And they play that 1-2-2 zone defense, and we're going to see that again here tonight. It's a trapping defense, about three-quarters court, and it has been tough on the opposition. Atlantic led 30-6 against Clarenda on Tuesday night at one point. The Cardinals end up scoring over 30 points in that game uh, late, but uh, the Trojan uh, first-teamers really put the uh, throttle down of the pressure on a Tuesday. Atlantic led by Peyton Hart of the sophomore, averaging 17 points a game and 10 rebounds. He's averaging double-double uh, coming into this one here uh, this evening. And Jada Jensen, the point guard, doing her uh, role very, very well, uh, averaging 10 points a game. And she averages three rebounds a contest. 22 steals for Jensen so far this season. And she has 24 assists for uh, Atlantic. Their liquidity, their fluidity, on offense has just been tremendous uh, so far this season. Others for the Trojans, Aubrey Geyer, she's averaging six points a game and four rebounds, but she does a lot of other things off ball, as does Kira Olson. Olson doesn't have those inflated statistics, but uh, she moves people around inside, allows, uh, has, gets great position for others, and uh, Olson comes in averaging two points a game and two rebounds a contest. Uh, but uh, still does a lot of things that uh, we don't actually see uh, in the stat book. And you'll hear Coach Vargas and talk a lot about that as well. Maddie Huddleston, boy, I tell you, she can get hot and she can hit the three. So far this season, she is 7 of 30 from three-point line. But it seems like uh, she comes in and sparks the team. Atlantic with 15 threes uh, so far this season. About 22.7%. So I think Coach Vargas would like to see that uh, maybe inflate just a little bit. Atlantic is shooting uh, 40 percent for the field uh, here this season so far just five games in and 51 percent uh, from the free throw line they've scored 241 points in the first uh, five games so just shy of 50 points a game for the uh, crest and panthers uh, they don't have anybody that's uh, averaging double figures but their center and she's tall Doran pop at six foot uh, she's averaging 14 a game and eight rebounds of Crest, and otherwise a lot of single digits uh, for the rest of the squad. Uh, Nevaeh Randall, the senior, uh, four points a contest, three each for Keeley Cohen, and uh, J.C. Krolick with uh, three uh, point uh, per game average, and Cadley Bailey, the freshman, two. Uh, Elia Calvin, who'll start. Uh, she's averaging two points a game as well. For Crest, and they've scored 174 points so far this season compared to Atlantic's 241. And the Panthers, uh, they've struggled from behind the three-point line, hitting just 10% and 29% for the field overall, just shy of 30% uh, from the uh, field. More coming up here. We're getting close to starting lineups. We're back in one minute on 95.7 FM. We're live streaming now on KS957 and WesternIowaToday.com. If you're stuck on... Get a little extra dough this holiday season at Community First Credit Union. If you're one of the many who need a little extra help this time of year, you're going to love our holiday loan special. We're offering a rate lower than most credit cards, no collateral requirements, and an easy online or in-branch application. This loan is excellent for holiday shopping, consolidating your debt, and more. To apply, stop by your local C-First branch or apply online at C1STCU. Com today. Some restrictions apply. Loans are subject to credit approval. Equal housing opportunity. First Windy Bank is the longest standing locally owned bank in Atlantic. And as such, we take pride in how we serve our community. For generations, we have been involved with our customers and their families by getting involved in community events and by supporting technology and teaching financial literacy in our schools. You'll also see our support of athletics on the scoreboards at home events. It's this involvement that allows us to know our customers and their families for generations. First Windy Bank, the only bank you'll ever need. Member FDIC. Welcome back to Creston. Tom Robinson and Cody Weaver with you here on 95.7 FM on the radio and on our TV, on our live video stream at westerniowatoday.com. Uh, go to westerniowatoday.com, and then you'll go to the uh, live video. You'll see that black tab, that black bar there. Click on live video, then go to KS957, and you can watch uh, this game, these games as well. This is the first of two tonight here at uh, Creston. Starting lineups, let's start with Atlantic. And they'll start Peyton Hart of the 5'10 sophomores. We mentioned averaging 17 uh, points a contest uh, for the Trojans and 10 rebounds. Double-double so far this season. Maddie Huddleston, a 5'4 senior, 
Huddleston, excuse me, 5'7 senior for Huddleston, uh, the three-point shooter for Atlantic, averaging five a game. Also, Kira Olson, a 5'9 senior. Aubrey Gara, a six-foot senior. Geyer has uh, had a good start this season, as of all these players. And uh, Jada Jensen, a 5'9 senior. So Harder, Jensen, Huddleston, Olson, and Geyer start for Atlantic head coach Dan Vargason, assisted by uh, Shelby McCready and McCready's JV team victorious tonight over Creston here a little bit uh, earlier. Lineups for Creston. They'll start to J.C. Kralik, a 5'7 senior. Keely Cohen, a 5'4 senior. Nevaeh Randall, a 5'8 senior. Aliyah Calvin, a 5'8 senior. And Doran Puff, a 6'0 senior. Our opening tip-off coming up is brought to you by the First Whitney Bank. First Whitney Bank, the only bank you'll ever need. First Whitney Bank in Atlantic. Don't you just want to crawl in? John here from Atlantic IV. I just wanted to thank Atlantic and the surrounding communities for allowing us to serve your meat, grocery, floral, and pharmacy needs. You can be sure that we are working hard looking for deals to save you money on your groceries and at the pump. Thanks again from all of us here at your Atlantic IV for allowing us to serve your meat, grocery, floral, and pharmacy needs. And we'll see you soon. Whether you're looking for utility, dump, cargo, equipment, aluminum, or steel trailers, Olson's Outdoor Power has you covered with over 100 H&H trailers in stock. In a world full of supply chain delays and never-ending back orders, we've been able to secure a large inventory of H&H trailers ready for all of your fall plans and projects. Stop in today. Olson's Outdoor Power, your one-stop service and equipment shop with locations in Atlantic and Carroll. Don't you just want to crawl in a hole when someone unwraps the gift you agonized over and says, oh... I love it. In a tone that says they absolutely don't love it. Well, here's a suggestion. Don't torture yourself. Buy them a First Whitney Bank gift card. It's a gift that will fit anyone on your list, and it comes in a whole range of sizes. In fact, this gift might fit everyone on your list. Then when they say, oh, I love it, you'll know they mean it. Certain fees and restrictions apply. Inquire for details. First Whitney Bank in Atlantic, member FDIC. After years of wondering why I see more runners than other athletes, I figured it out. Well, a sophomore hurdler explained it to me. This is Dr. Fritz Beyer of Body Basics Chiropractic, and he told me since my hips started knocking up, I lost one second from my time. One second in a 55-second race is less than 2%, but he knew it instantly because the stopwatch told him. In other sports, there's not a stopwatch to tell you when the nagging injury takes 2% from you. To make sure you're giving your 100%, call 254-BODY to get your body back to the basics. Welcome back to Quest, and here we go. The uh, Trojans and the Panthers will jump it up. Our opening tip brought to you by the First Whitney Bank. They're the only bank you'll ever need. First of Whitney Bank uh, coming out for Atlantic. Peyton Harder, Jada Jensen, Maddie Huddleston, Kira Olson, and Aubrey Geyer. And for Quest, uh, Randall, Keeley Cohen, J.C. Kralik out there with Aaliyah Calvin and uh, Doran Pop. So we'll get set to go. Pop, a six foot senior, jumping up against Aubrey Geyer, the most six footers. Here's the tip right away. Geyer controls it. Jensen will gather it in. And Atlantic has first possession. Olsen back out to Jensen, left wing to Maddie Huddleston. Will size up the Crescent defense in a 2 3 zone. Chasing out front is uh, Cohen. From the elbow, Jensen shot, no good. Rebound here. Olsen put back his in. Atlantic up two to nothing. Olsen was just camped out there on that left side of the key, or the uh, basket, and was able to uh, snag the rebound and put it back up in there. Atlantic up two to nothing. The score brought you to the C pros are by your side to maximize yields from the word go. Frolic has it, a back over right side. Aaliyah Calvin, a baseline J by Cohen missed. And the rebound, Maddie Huddleston. And you'll note and you'll watch the 34. She is around the ball all the time. She snags a lot of rebounds. Now she's going to fire a long two off the mark, and the rebound pulled down by the Panthers. Nabea Randall and Olsen called with a foul right out of the gate as we're 52 seconds into then this one here. Atlantic 2-0 on Olsen's a put-back shot of the rebound. Joe just came out of that 2-1 two, two zone here. Now it's a 2-1-1 one, one zone. They move the ball across the timeline. 
Dorn Pop will set up at the high post, and she'll get the ball. She's averaging 14. You stole it by Harder. Pass ahead of Jada Jensen. She'll go all the way inside the block. Full away chase from two, and it's blocked, and a foul's going to be called on Creston. Foul on Aaliyah Calvo, the 5-H senior, so that'll put Jada Jensen on the free throw line for Atlantic here early. 6.47 to play in the first quarter. The seed pros scoreboard. Jada Jensen to the line for the Trojans. Olsen with a two for Atlantic so far. Olsen eyes the rim, spins it up, and it is good. Took a nice high bounce off that heel and went through the net. Second free throw by Jensen, shooting 58.8%. Second free throw money right through. Atlantic up 4 to nothing of the Seed Pro scoreboard. Here's that 1-2-1-1 one, one, one zone trapping defense. They run Jensen to the point, and now the race through by Krolik breaks the press. Cohen has the ball trapped out top. Krolik, left side to Randall. They go to baseline, and we got a whistle travel called in Creston. Atlantic up 4 to nothing of the Seed Pro scoreboard, and they'll have the basketball back on the turnover. Huddleston, entry pass into Jensen, swooping it across the timeline. On the radio, we're going left to right. Huddleston, Jensen, top of the circle, high post, Olsen. Sends it high and right to Huddleston. Now baseline, Geyer. Geyer gets it out of traffic to Jensen. Landing with good ball, moving against the zone. Jensen into Olsen, and the ball tapped away. She'll get it back. Shot clock at 15. Pass whipped down to Geyer. Back to Jensen, open for three. She'll launch it, and it is no good. Rebound snagged by Pop. For Creston, averaging eight boards a game for the Panthers. Ball in the front court with Cohen. Atlantic in that trapping zone, half-court defense. And the ball's knocked away by Jensen. Goes into Creston's backcourt. They'll have it in the backcourt with 5 of 46 to play in the first quarter of the seed pro scoreboard. 4-0 Atlantic. Jensen, 2 for 2 from the line. And Olsen hit a bunny inside, left side of the basket. So the inbounds pass goes to Krolik, and she'll set it right side of Cohen. You see on the backcourt to Pop in the circle. Pop in the front court on the drive. Runner up, no good. And the rebound uh, tipped by Olsen and then out of bounds. Preston will have it on the baseline. Lennox had that basket corralled with the ball off of Olsen's fingertips out of bounds along the baseline. So the Panthers have it. Lennox up 4 nothing. Inbounds goes baseline. Three ball by Cohen. No good. Pop with the board. Put back is in. Doran Pop with the rebound and the putback. It's a 4-2 game. Atlantic by a pair, and they have the ball. Huddleston high and right. Out top to uh, Jensen. Into Olsen. She pivots. Against the hall back out top and a whistle, and they're going to call three seconds on Olsen. And the Panthers get it back, and off the bench here comes Maddie Richter, the sophomore for the Trojans. Out goes Olsen. So Richter will be on that defensive end of guarding of Randall. Inbounding the ball will be Ilya Calvin for Creston. Calvin in the middle of that uh, offense against the zone. Ball across the timeline to Doran Pop. Pop right side to Cohen. Cohen now inside to Pop. Turns drive, shot up, and it is good. And they're going to count it. She gets the end one. 4-4 ball game is Doran Pop now with four. Averaging 14 a game, and she's going to get the end one to uh, try to put her squad up. As the Panthers now four straight points. Doran Pop's free throw is money. And the Panthers up 5-4. Five, five minutes left, first quarter. Jensen across the timeline, right side of Huddleston. Huddleston directs traffic into Geyer. Geyer over to Richter. Richter back to Jensen. Good rotation by the defense for Creston. Geyer to Jensen. The Huddleston, she'll fire up the three. No good. Rebound, Richter drives inside the block, has it tipped away, gets it back. Ball is tipped again, a scramble forward. Creston has it. And they clear the traffic with Cohen. Panthers on the move to the front court. Baseline to there, Randall. Randall near side to Calvin. Now back right side to Randall. Randall on the baseline, guarded by Geyer. Clears it out. Near side to Kronick. Over to Leah Calvin. Calvin against that zone. A foul called on Matty Richter. And that's three on Atlantic here early on with 417 to go in the first quarter. Panthers scored five straight. Threw up five to nothing. All five points scored by Pop. Get the ball to the outside. A pop on the high and right. Ball left side. 
The bomb by Cohen, missed it, tipped out by Doran Pop, Atlantic's ball. Preston, 5 nothing. Two field goals by Pop and a free throw. She got the and one. 5 4. Atlantic will have the basketball as Maddie Huddleston to Jada Jensen. Crescent drops back in that 2 3 zone defense. Out top is Cohen. Andy Calvin. Richter, left side, fires a three. Good! Richter hits the triple. Trojans needed that as they jump back in lead 7 to 5. Richter with the three. Olsen two and Jensen two. Preston has it and they struggle against that pressure defense. They were trapped along the side. Jason Krolik, the 5'7 senior. And it batted out of bounds, so Creston keeps it. She'll throw it in baseline. Krolik, get passes stolen by Huddleston. Huddleston coast to coast, layup up, God! Maddie Huddleston with two, and Atlanta comes back with five straight to lead nine to five. Timeout called, we'll take it with them. We're back right after this from the Seed Pros. Live video streaming on westerniowatoday.com is courtesy of Nishnanet. Offering always fast internet with no gimmick pricing to select rural areas of Cass and Audubon counties. Nishinanet is a local company with local technicians and offers unlimited data on most of their internet plans. Learn more about Nishinanet and their services and products by going to their website at nishinanet.com. Nishinanet.com, technically awesome. View from the word go. This is for us, Mark Van Tucker, Gary Dinkwit, Nick Knudsen, and John Becker. Welcome back to Creston. So the Panthers went on a 5-0 run. Atlantic answers with a 5-0 run. They take the lead back 9-5 after the timeout. Panthers have the basketball. 3.30 to go here in this first quarter. Cole just jumped out 4-0. Olsen got the two, and Jensen made two free throws. And then the Panthers scored five straight. Dorn Pop with all five. They'll have the ball on the entry pass. Huddleston, <laughs> i tell you what, she is a hustler, and she's able to knock it out of bounds along the baseline. Trojans have scattered out there scoring with four people. Richter had that big three. Olsen, Huddleston, two, and Jensen with two free throws. Peyton Harder yet to really touch the ball on the offensive end. The leading score averaging 17. Inbounds pass to Pop. Now the ball game is a Bailey. They go inside to Randall. Shot up no good. Rebound Peyton Harder for Atlantic averaging 10 a game. She'll get it out to Jada Jensen. Jensen right side to Huddleston. We have a whistle. So evidently we didn't get that shot clock going. It's at 33 right now. There we got it down to 30, so it's square. 317 to go in the first quarter. Lanning up nine to five. Inbounds to Jensen. Right side of Huddleston. Baseline harder. Out to Jensen. Wide open Richter. For three for the left side. No good off the front iron. Rebound Huddleston. Back door to here. Harder. Layup is God. Good look by Huddleston. Harder gets the bucket. Atlantic on a 7-0 run. And they are leading 11 to 5. Panthers with the basketball. They'll throw it ahead to Cohen. Bailey, baseline Randall. She'll pull up. Good D by the Trojans. Back out top to Cohen. Pass inside, tipped away and picked up on the backside by Cohen and tipped out by Atlantic. Boy, they really want to get inside to Pop. She's averaging 14. She's six foot tall inside. Out to the lineup comes Randall. Ella Turner, the 5'6 freshman, will come in. Enjoying Cohen. We'll pick up the rest here in a moment. Pop is in there. Here's the inbounds way up top to Bailey. Near side of Cohen. They dump it into Pop. Pop against Harder. Turn, shoots, no good. And the ball tipped long. Picked up by Bailey. They go baseline to two. Turner missed the shot. Atlanta gets the rebound. Geyer snags it. Dishes. Jensen brings it across. Huddleston inside to Harder. Now the scramble for it. And the jump ball, Preston has the arrow, 2.17 to go in the first quarter. Atlantic up 11-5 on a 7-0 run. They jumped out 4-0. Panthers responded on a 5-0 run. Trojans came back with seven straight. Fueled by Matty Richter's three ball. That kick started that engine, and they uh, scored seven straight points. Cohen with it. They bring it up against the pressure. Krolik, now Cohen, top of the circle. Baseline shot up to about 10 foot. No good, but Pop there with a rebounder. Put back is in. Pop has all seven. 
for the Panthers, and it's 11 to 7. Trojans lead cut to four. Richter left side back out top to Jensen. Huddleston into harder. She'll go to work on the low block. Back out top to Huddleston. Whistle. We got a foul cold. Oh, no. Three seconds. Three seconds on Atlantic. You don't see that call very often. And the Panthers will have the basketball. Aaliyah Calvin will throw it in. They'll bring it up against the pressure. J.C. Kronick over to Cohen. Cohen pass ahead to Pop across the timeline. Pop baseball pass. Hard pass low to Turner. And she threw. Tried to save him. Went out of bounds. It did Edelson. And Creston will keep the ball. Back in is Cadley Bailey. Keeley Cohen gets a break with 1.40 to go. Here in this first quarter, Creston has it to 26 on the shot clock. Calvin out top. Pop. Bounce pass right baseline. Near side. On the drive, Kralik. Dumps it right side to Bailey. Inside to Pop. Turnaround jumper is no good. And Geyer there to muscle down the rebound for Atlantic at the 122 mark. Jada Jensen across the timeline on the drive, spinning to Richter, left baseline. She'll attack the rim, scoop shot up, and it is no good. And a foul called on Creston. Nice dribble drive by Richter. The three-point shooter, she gave a good head fake, put the ball to the deck and drove to the rim and drew the foul. So Richter will be on the free-throw line for a pair. And she has three points so far here in this first quarter. And she's perfect from the line this season. Six for six, now seven for seven. As she makes that one, Atlantic now up 12 to 7. Second free throw right on the money. Five points for Richter here in the first quarter. Atlantic up 13 to 7 on the seed pro school board. 1.14 to go first quarter. Calvin near side to Chronic. Calvin will bring it across the half court line. Trying to stay out of that trap. Back to Calvin. She'll go a baseline to Turner. Inside to Pop. Guarded by Geyer. Pop back out top and a foul called on the Trojans. A reaching foul on Pop. 59 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Atlantic up 13 to 7 on the Seed Pro scoreboard. And J.C. Kralik will throw it in. Cadley Bailey way out top takes it. She's open. She's going to fire up the three off the back iron. Rebound harder for Atlantic. 55 seconds to go in the first quarter. Here come the Trojans. Pass ahead to Richter. Back out top to Jens. He's got to save it from over and back as she does. Huddleston. Richter in the middle. Sets up the O. Geyer left wing. Skip pass Huddleston. Down low, Harder. Harder goes to work in the paint. Shut off the glass. No good. And the rebound door and pop. And a foul call on Geyer reaching in. That's five on Atlantic here in this first quarter. Two on Creston. 35 seconds to go in quarter number one. And Olsen comes in for Maddie Richter. Foul call on Geyer. That's her first. Out to the lineup uh, comes J.C. Kralik, and back in is Keeley Cohen. Cohen with the basketball, now Atlantic's pressure. Pass ahead of Doran Pop. Pop driving down the left side, stops, pops, it's good. Doran Pop has scored all the points uh, now for Creston. Atlantic up 13-9, and Doran Pop is all nine, averaging 14 a game. And if you look at their stats, the rest of the team really in low single digits. Pop is the go-to girl. Atlantic with it. Maddie Huddleston for three. No good. Six seconds to go. 5-4. Pass near side in the first quarter. Backdoor pop. Out of bounds. And that'll be it here in the first quarter. Atlantic 13. Creston 9. We're back in one minute with the second quarter. A 95.7 FM and live streaming on westerniowatoday.com. KS957. It tis the holiday season so it is tis the time for a great deal from Olson's BP in Atlantic your December special get three dollars off a large specialty Godfather's pizza and it tis the season to be jolly so what better way to make yourself jolly than to save some extra money and have a great go to dinner this holiday season your December special at Olson's BP get three dollars off any large specialty Godfather's pizza from Olson's BP the keep you going store Olson's Outdoor Power is your one-stop service and equipment shop for all things outdoor. We sell the best power sports products in the business from Polaris, Can-Am, Sea-Doo, and Ski-Doo, trailers to tackle any job from H&H, Triton, and Wilson, and we continue to lead the way in lawn and garden equipment with great products from x Dixie Chopper, Husqvarna, Cub Cadet, Steel, and Echo. Add factory train technicians in two locations, and it's easy to see why Olson's Outdoor Power is the leader in all things outdoor. Olson's Outdoor Power, your one-stop service and equipment shop with locations in Atlantic and Carroll. Neighbors caring for neighbors. 
Welcome back to Crest and Atlantic leading 13 to 9 here in this first quarter. Doran Pop all nine points for Creston. Atlantic scattered them out to Maddie Richter with five points. Two for Kier Olson, Maddie Huddleston, Jada Jensen, and Peyton Harder. Atlantic with the ball to start the second stanza. Geyer left baseline. Out top to Jensen. High and right to Huddleston. Back to Jensen. Top of the circle. Huddleston still that 2-3 zone by Creston. Both teams running a zone defense. Olson distributes to a Jensen. Shot blocked by Pop. Inside the block, and the Panthers get the ball back. Down by four. Baseline, Keeley Cohen. Baseline, short J. Shot, no. Rebound, Jensen. Here comes the gold. Jensen left to right to cross the timeline for Atlantic. Pass over to Geyer, left wing. Geyer back to Jensen. Jensen averages 10. Geyer averages 6. She's going to fire up a 3. Too deep. Rebound. Harder put back is good. Peyton Harder with the put back for Atlantic. 15 to 9. Trojans by 6 on the seed. Pros score more. Creston with it. They go to the middle to uh, Kralik. Kralik brings it across the timeline down that far sideline. Tippy toes down and drives in. Runner no. Rebound Jensen. Here comes Atlantic back the other way up 15 to 9. 6.57 to play in the first half. Huddleston back out top to Jensen. She'll swing it left. Geyer. Geyer picked up by Cohen. Baseline Jensen on the left side. Looks out top to Huddleston. Back to Geyer. Huddleston left baseline. Had a shot for a moment, then covered nicely by Nevaeh Randall. Now Jada Jensen again. Into Harder off her toe. Picked up by Crest and a turnover. Atlantic Ella Turner got it. And she gets it back out to Randall. Back to Turner. Drives left side all the way in. Lab no good. Rebound. Pop. Put back is in. Doran Pop all 11 points. 15-11 Atlantic by four. 6-19 to go in the first half. Jada Jensen over to Aubrey Geyer. Geyer picked up by Cohen. Goes baseline Jensen. Jensen looks back out to Geyer. Geyer will set up the offense for Atlantic. 20 the shot clock. Jensen left side inside to Olsen. Olsen has the ball tipped away, and it's stolen by Randall. Randall will rush to the other end. Her layup is up, and it is no good, but she draws the foul. That's six on Atlantic, and Creston making a run down by four, 15 to 11. And we'll see if the Panthers can get another player in the score column. As <laughs> Doran Pop has all 11 points coming in. Pop averaging 14. Randall on the line for Crest of the seed who puts it up and it is no good. Atlantic four for four from the free throw line in the first quarter. Randall misses second free throw coming up. Randall the senior shooting 43% for the free throw line. Three of eight now. Second free throw off the lip and the rebound is tapped to Huddleston and the Trojans bring it to the front court. Jensen across the timeline to Huddleston. Back to Jensen, top of the circle, back to Huddleston, high and right. Goes baseline, puts up a 14-footer off the glass, miss, pop of the rebound. Warren Pop snags another. She averages eight a game coming in. Crescent is winless so far this season. Pass high post, told by Geyer. Nice job by Aubrey Geyer. Back to Jensen, she'll bring it across. 5.27 to play in the first half, Atlantic. Leading by four, 15 to 11. Huddles to the baseline of Peyton Harder. Skip pass out to Jensen. She'll launch the deep three. God! Jada Jensen with five. Nets the three ball, her six to three point make of the season. Creston with the ball ahead. They'll go to Keeley Cohen. Left side pass. Kralik, Randall into pop, and a foul called on Harder. That's seven Atlantic, so we'll have the front end of the one and one. And that's two on a harder. 4.59 to play. First half, here comes Maddie Richter in. And out to comes uh, Kira Olsen. So harder with two fouls. Atlantic was seven here in the first half. So a front end shot for Doran Pop. Free throw was off the back iron. No good. Rebound Aubrey Geyer. Great job by Geyer. And Creston 0 for 3 from the line here. Excuse me, 1 for 4 from the line in the first half. Huddleston for Atlantic in the front court. Skip pass over to Richter high and left. To Jensen. Turn. Shoots from the elbow. Off the glass. No good. Rebound Huddleston for Atlantic. They'll reset. 32 on the shot clock. 439 to play in the first half. Atlantic up by the score of 18 to 11. Into Richter. Layup up. God. Nice duck under by Richter. And she has seven points for Atlantic. Code is up by nine. Their largest lead to 20 to 11 here in the first half. Richter. With a three, a couple of free throws, and now that bucket. 
Pass into Pop, go to by Harder, turn around jumper, no good. Harder with a rebound, a kick out to Jensen, 4-10 to go here in this first half. Jensen brings it across. Pass left side to Richter. Well, for Paul, for a moment, she retrieves it. Ball whipped over to Huddleston, right wing, into Harder, back to Jensen. She feels it, fires up the three, no good. Rebound run down by Nevea Randall. She'll get across to the near side. Krolik, double teamed in that trap. Gets it away to Bailey. And the ball stolen by Richter. Lanik back the other way. Pass ahead to Jensen. One-on-one -on -one down the block. Shot up no good. And the rebound to Keeley Cohen. Preston has it. Pass ahead. Krolik between the rings. And Lanik in that 2-3 zone, as you see. Krolik bounce pass baseline to Cohen. 2011 Trojans. Cohen drives baseline. Throws it away. We're going to have a foul called on Harder. That'll be probably 2-1 on her. And that's going to be foul number eight on Atlantic. Three on Harder. So coach is going to send Olsen in right out of the gate. Harder comes out. Will come out. There they let her in. Olsen in. Harder out to Payton with four points. And three fouls. 3.24 to go in the second quarter. We'll probably not see her the rest of the half. Free throw by Keeley Cohen. High, no good. And the rebound at Maddie Huddleston. Lining up by 9, 20 to 11 on the seed. Pro scoreboard. Jada Jensen over to Maddie Huddleston. The baseline right to Geyer. Geyer skip past Jensen. Down inside to Olsen. Turn shot, no good. Rebound comes off to Bailey. Cadley Bailey, the 5 4 freshman. Gets it across to Kralik, back to Bailey at the top of the circle. She'll wing it left to Keeley Owen, down inside, and Geyer almost with the steal. They try to go low inside to Calvin, and a nice job by Geyer swooping in to knock it away. Preston will keep it baseline right. Atlantic up 20 to 11. Just under three to play. There's a steal by Jensen. She'll go all the way down and lays it in for Atlantic. And Jensen with seven points, and a timeout is called. We'll be back in 30 seconds with more from Creston Atlantic, leading 22 to 11. Outfitters. At Second Street Auto, it's our mission to get you back on the road fast. And it all starts with free local towing. Once you're back at the shop, we talk you through your car repair with a free and fair estimate. We do everything in-house so you know who's working on your car. Our Hercules tires come with free road hazard repair, free rotation for the life of the tires, and a free alignment check. And nobody can beat our transmission rebuild and repair experts. Brakes, tune-ups, oil changes, preventative maintenance, and service work make Second Street your first stop. In Atlantic. Welcome back to Crest and Trojans up uh, their largest lead now with 21 to 11. 22 to 11, I beg your pardon. With the ball, Creston. They'll get it across the timeline to Bailey. Right baseline open for three. She's not shy. She'll fire. No good. And Jensen snags it for Atlantic. Trojans bring it to the front with 2.35 to play in the second quarter. Atlantic up by 11. Huddleston right side fires a three. Knocks it down. Huddleston with the three. She has five for the game. And Huddleston with an eighth three-point make this season. And Atlantic's biggest lead at 25 to 11. Kirkhoff will check in next dead ball for the Trojans. Panthers have it in the front. Calvin near side, they go baseline to Cadley, Bailey into Pop, turn, shoots over Geyer, good. Lauren Pop, 13 for Pop. 25, 13 Atlantic. Pop has all 13 points, he averages 14. Huddleston high and right. Back out to Jensen, Geyer, left side Richter, she'll fire up the triple, good! Maddie Richter's found her rhythm. Atlantic up 28 to 13. Panthers have it, steal by Jensen, down the lane, layup, good! Jada Jensen, seven points here in the second quarter, she's nine, and the Trojans up 30 to 13. And Pop goes out of bounds. They're gonna say it's last touch by Geyer. Zoe Kirkhoff comes in for Jensen. Ella Turner and Nevaeh Randall in for Creston. Bailey comes out, so also out is Aaliyah Kelvin. Panthers have it in their front court. Kick it out top. Nevia Randall will set it left side. Ella Turner. Turner, skip pass back to Randall. Lanik rotates on that zone defense. 
Baseline Keeley Cohen for three. A high arcer missed it. And the rebound it kicked right back to Creston. Just over a minute to go in the second quarter. Here's a deep three at the top by Randall. Missed Cole with the rebound. Hits the deck, and yeah, that's a travel. Ball will belong to Atlantic up 20, 30 to 13. Jada Jensen had two points in the first quarter. She has nine for the Trojans. Maddie Richter has been a big factor. Two threes, eight. She has ten. Pass through Richter high and left. 50 seconds to go in the first half. Zoe Kirkhoff into Olsen. Throws it away. Pop with the steal. She's going to take it all the way to the rim. And it's picked off by Richter. That jump ball. Great call by the official because Richter was clean. As you saw on that ball. And it'll be a jump. And Creston's basketball. Aubrey Geyer comes out. Their pellet not suited up tonight. And we didn't uh, get a note on that. We'll try to. Catch up to that pop entry pass shot. No rebound. Wiederstein for Atlantic. Wiederstein will pull up to Kirkhoff. Back out top to Huddleston. So a couple of freshmen in there now with Wiederstein and Kirkhoff. 26 seconds to go. 19 of the shot clock here in this first half. The ball almost stolen away. Huddleston gets it back, and then we got a whistle. It's going to be over and back. It'll be Panthers' ball. Now they're going to call a foul on Huddleston. That'll be 10 on Atlantic, so it's going to be a double bonus for Creston. Panthers just two fouls here in this first half. Trojans have been penalized 10 times. And the free throws are coming up for Nevaeh Randall. The only score has been pop here. Randall's free throw on the way and good. <laughs> Randall gets the free throw, 30-14 to 14 Atlantic with a big lead on the seed pro scoreboard. Levere Randall's second a free throw. Forthcoming in the air. Good. Nice job by Randall. 17 seconds to go in a half, and Huddles will bring it across the time in methodical fashion. They'll go for one shot up 30 to 15. Huddleston, top of the circle. Hands it off to Zoe Kirkhoff at six. Back to Huddleston at four. Drive, shoots at three. No good. Rebound, Wienerstein. Ball shot at the buzzer. No good. Richter's putback is no good. And we're through the first half of playing Atlantic with a 30-15 lead over the Creston Panthers. Our halftime show coming up. Halftime brought to you by Olsen's Fuel and Olsen's BP. We're back with a first half scoring after this from Olsen's BP. Hey, Creon, what do you like most about track? Competing and the strategy with each race. That's just like how Dad and the Seed Pros place different products on different farms. So true. Just like every race brings a different challenge, every field has its own challenges. The Seed Pros partner with each operation to ensure the right product is placed on the right acre. Unmatched year-round service with the expertise to help you win on every acre. The Seed Pros, with you from the word go. The Seed Pros, Mark Van Tegger, Gary Dinklet, Nick Knutson, and John Becker. Week, they beat Clint on Tuesday at ACGC last night. They held ACGC to 13, and they've held Clarinda, or Crescent rather, to 15 here in the first half. Doran Pop with all but two of the points. Uh, Pop with 13 points uh, for Crescent, the six-foot senior. Otherwise, the Trojans have shut everyone else down, and Nevaeh Randall went two for four from the line. She has the other two. As Atlantic led 13 to 9 at the end of the first quarter and then really stepped on the gas in that second quarter, outscoring uh, Creston 17 to 6. And for the Trojans here in the first half of play, Maddie Richter off the bench has sparked this offense. Two threes uh, for Richter. She has 10 points uh, to lead Atlantic. Jada Jensen has a three point shot to her credit. And Jensen with nine points in the first half. Maddie Huddleston with seven or with five, rather. Olsen with two, and Peyton Harder with four. Harder, the leading scorer, averaging 17, has been held down in the first half, uh, but her teammates have stepped up uh, for the Trojans. Lanny scored 13 points in the first quarter and 17 points in the second, and they held the Panthers to just six points in that second quarter. We're at halftime, Atlantic up 30 to 15 over the Panthers halftime brought to you by uh, Olson's Fuel and Olson's BP back right after this. It is the gas prices got you down. Need a ride to work or the grocery store? 
there's public transportation for everyone in Southwest Iowa. SWIDA offers taxi service in Atlantic, Glenwood, Harlan, Missouri Valley, Red Oak, and Shenandoah. $2.50 each way or $2 for seniors 60 years and older. Just call 1-800-842-8065 or visit SWIDA.com to schedule your ride. The Trojans had jumped out to a 4 0 lead in that first quarter, then the Panthers responded with five straight to make it a 5 4 game. And it was all Doran Pop scoring. She had a bucket and then they got the two and the one. And it was 5 4. But then the Trojans bolted out to a 7 0 run after that. They held leads as large as 25 to 11 in that second quarter. And it closed out the second stanza with a 30 to 15 lead here over the uh, Creston Panthers. Boys game will be coming up next. Uh, Panthers and the Trojans. Atlantic coming off a win over Clarinda last Tuesday night, a game in which Carter Pallett snagged 21 rebounds uh, for the Trojans in that contest last Tuesday. Cody Weaver and I were there for that broadcast and had a lot of fun. We'll take a two-minute timeout. We're at halftime. Atlantic girls 30 and Creston 15. We'll be back right after these on our live stream at westerniowatoday.com and on the radio at 95.7 FM. The Super Chosen by the motivated. Chosen by the hardworking. Chosen by soybean growers everywhere. Stein Seed is built on legendary soybean genetics. Our decades of research have resulted in Stein Enlist E3 brand soybeans, which offer superior weed control, higher yield performance, and ease of use. For soybeans, choose Stein because Stein has yield. Your field will prove you right. For more information on Stein E3 and more Stein products, contact Trey Brex at 712-249-2503. The Super Bowl in Atlantic is a staple of Cass County get-togethers. From family reunions, birthday parties, night out with friends, and a fun date night, the Super Bowl has always been here. With glow bowling on Fridays and Saturdays, bumpers and ramps for kids, anyone can have a blast at the Super Bowl. Get the ball rolling on your next night out and get together. Call Dan at 243-4656 to book the Super Bowl in Atlantic. Olson's BP and Olson's fuel your home for a Godfather's pizza, but I also want to say your home for great to fuel and a champs chicken here at Olson's BP. I visit that uh, quite often. Cody Weaver with us, and uh, of course, is our wrestling play by play guy and uh, runs our camera during basketball game. Well, against the wrestling last night, too, you were double dipping there. <laughs> and Cody, and let's talk about the uh, duel last night. Trojans are at uh, Council Bluffs as we speak in that Council Bluffs Classic, which is today and tomorrow. But uh, let's talk about last night. Uh, came out against Crest, and the Panthers. Uh, Really pretty good, huh? Yeah, they uh, we had a double duel last night in Red Oak, uh, two Hawkeye 10 uh, duels there. Russell Creston first duel, um, score ended up 45-25, uh, but you know we gave up a good handful of falls there, which are six points. Um, if we could have kept those points to three versus the six, you know it would have been a lot closer duel. Um, we were missing maybe a couple kids where we could have shifted the lineup a little bit, but you know Creston came out aggressive. Um, worked for the pen, got the pen, and uh, the duel was pretty lopsided there. Uh, second duel of the night, then we took on uh, Red Oak, um, and Red Oak is kind of a mix of older, experienced kid. You've got a, a Dawson Bond kid who's rated number one in the state, you know, been a starter for him for four years now. And they've got some younger kids too, but they also have about five or six open weights. I believe they had five open weights against uh, Creston, and then they had six against us. So. You know, they gave us 36 points and ended up 60-something uh, to 11 there. Uh, but, you know, those 11 points that Red Oak scored uh, came off a 126-pound uh, weight class there and a 160-pound weight class there, a tech fall and a fall. So I want to go back to some individuals. Um, Tate Jordan uh, came out and wrestled well at 6. Uh, we got a winner at 13 as well. And... Uh, and Brennan Casey and uh, Miles Mundor. Yeah, if you kind of go get the Creston duel there, uh, Tay Jordan came out with a real nice, um, you know, pretty close match there most of the way through, and Tay ended up getting the fall there. Um, we started at 285, um, where Creston was able to uh, come out with a victory there. Uh, we went to 106. Tay Jordan, again, a close match there, and ended up winning by fall. 113, it was uh, Josh Haas stepping in for Atlantic. 
um, and Haas ended up with the fall there. So I believe it was 12-6 at that point. And then at uh, 120 pounds, they bumped Aiden Smith up and he wrestled uh, Christian Aarons there at 120 pounds. Uh, both ranked wrestlers, uh, Smith ranked number two or three there at 113 pounds and Aarons ranked around 10th at 120. And it was a 4-2 decision for Aarons. And I believe those kids met, you know, several times last year. Um, Smith, you know, giving up some weight there, but um, Smith controlled most of the matches last year, all the matches last year. And we jumped up and we gave up about four or five falls there at 126 pounds, 132 pounds, 138 pounds. And then it was uh, Easton O'Brien coming out at 145 pounds. Um, and with a, a loss, uh, Tanner, excuse me, Tyson O'Brien with a loss. And then uh, Tanner O'Brien came out um, and also, you know, with a loss. So we kind of got back on the right side of things there at 170 pounds, I believe, with Jared Armstrong. And then our upper weights there, you know, Casey had a, a good match. And uh, Miles Casey at 220 really came out, you know, started the match off uh, strong there and, uh, you know, kind of ran out of gas. It was a 9-4 yeah. decision, but, you know, he opened up a pretty good point lead there in the beginning, and that third period was, you know, it, it was tough for him to work through it. But, you know, it's only going to make your conditioning better. Um, today, the wrestlers are at Council Bluffs Classic, um, and it's a, they'll probably, it's a kind of a round robin to see where you end up in a silver pool or silver bracket or a gold bracket, depending upon how many wins or losses you have. And then they'll wrestle another good five matches tomorrow. Um, and this is big schools, little schools from, you know, five or six states. Um, a lot of competition there. Well, and uh, the beat goes on for the Trojans. And they've had some sickness in the room. And uh, But I really thought the uh, match against Red Oak, they really came out and uh, put it all on the mat. Uh, yeah, they were a little bit out. more prepared yeah. there, you know. Uh, you know, and if you look at last year, the duel was, you know, really close there. And, and we had some bonus points at the end of the year that are qualified for the state duels. So, you know, Creston probably wanted some revenge there. And I was thinking yes. about it last night a little bit, you know. And, you know, these senior class especially came down here and won in football, you know. And it was a close game and kind of knocked off. You know, Creston was ranked ahead of them. Um, and Creston ended up getting into the playoffs. Atlantic was out, but, you know, they kind of knocked Creston down a little bit there in football. And so there was probably some uh, um, <laughs> one there, a little bit of return there. Good stuff, Cody. Thank you very much. We start the second half. Atlantic up 30 to 15. And they have the basketball. Jada Jensen brings it across. Our halftime brought to you by Olsen's VP and Olsen's Fuel. Home of Godfather's Pizza. In a harder shot blocked by Pop. They're going to call a foul on Doran Pop. And that'll put uh, Peyton Hart on the free throw line. Harden with four points and three fouls in that first half. Harden with four points, averaging 17 coming into tonight's contest in the first five games. 88 points total for Harders. Hits the first of the two free throws. Atlantic up 31 to 15. Trojans try to make it three wins in a row. Harder now 9 of 19 for the free throw line. Second free throw is no good. Rebound Doran Pop, who's really done it all for Queston here. She scored all but two points in this uh, first half. Panthers have the basketball. Baseline goes to Cohen. Guarded by Huddleston. High post to go to the Bay Hall. Now to Pop. Short jumper is good. Doran Pop with... The bucket, 31 to 17, Atlantic with the lead. Jensen over to Huddleston, high and left. Looks to Jensen, left baseline, picked up by Hall and Olsen. Olsen back out top to Geyer, on the run, shot up and good! Aubrey Geyer with a nice runner and gets her first two of the ball game. It's 33-17, Atlantic on the seed pro scoreboard. Nevea Randall back to Calvin across to Cohen high post pops she'll take it to the rack shot over harder no good and Olsen grabs the rebound for Atlantic and the Trojans bring it right to left to the front Jada Jensen handles the pumpkin across the timeline Atlantic a big 33-17 score brought to you by the seed pros Maddie Huddleston skip pass to Jensen inside to harder back to Jensen long J no good rebound Cohen she was open a good shot by Jensen a long two for the right side Cohen with the rebound, baseline, Calvin, pull up jumper, a long shot, no good. Pop rebound, missed it, and Harder out, duels her for the board. And the Trojans bring the ball to the front court. 
Leading 33 to 17. First of two tonight with a boys game after this. Huddleston high and left for Atlantic. Back out top to Aubrey Geyer. Geyer to Huddleston. Left side. Baseline Jensen. Jada. Skip pass Aubrey Geyer. Back out top to Huddleston. Good patience by Atlantic. 13 the shot clock. Into Harder. Shot blocked by Pop. Harder gets it back. Put back is missed. Gets another rebound. Gets another rebound. Shot good. So Harder with three offensive putbacks. Right, Cody? <laughs> You know, she's in there, battled, came up for it three times, got the ball three times, and wasn't in the best position, but able to finish the shot there, get a foul, and hopefully she can add one here and make it a three-point uh, shot there for her. There you go. Harder with the first of two. Yeah, there you go, Cody. I thought they counted the bucket. So she gets the and one, and Harder at four, five points in the first half. Yeah, they don't have that on the board yet, but yeah, it, was, uh, it you, was good there. So. Yeah, three-point play. You know, and Pop really has been in good position underneath that basket, and she's gotten most of the rebounds there for Creston. But. Oh, there's a nice bank shot by Aaliyah Calvin, so the Panthers get some scoring now from the support staff, and it's 36-19, to 19, Atlantic on top. Jensen over to Huddleston, high and left. Huddles to the baseline to Peyton Harder. Harder back out top to Jensen. Right side of Geyer. Geyer holds the ball into Jensen inside the block. Kick out to Huddleston. She'll push up the three. No good. Skips off the rim. And the rebound comes down to Creston with 5.15 to go here in this third quarter. Atlantic up 36-19. Cohen right baseline for three. No good. Rebound Geyer for Atlantic. And she'll run. And now hold up to Jensen with five minutes left in the third stanza. 36-19 Trojans. Your score brought to the Seed Pros each and every game. The Seed Pros by your side to maximize yields. Thunderbird go. Contact John Becker, Mark Ben Tiger, Gary Dinklin, Nick Knutson for your Pioneer Seed needs. Arden Huddleston from the left. She'll fire a three. Good! How about that shot, Cody? She was wide open there, you know, and, and took the shot, and it was money. Quested with the basketball. Nevaeh Randall back to the middle. Calvin with it ahead to Keeley Cohen and Jada Jensen with a steal. She'll take it all the way down, layup no good. And the rebound comes off to Calvin. Pass ahead to Randall. She'll lob low to Pop and throws it away. Olsen was in Pop's hip pocket there on defense. So Huddleston will inbounds the ball with 4.18 to go in the third quarter. As the Atlantic uh, crowd continues to uh, gather here. Preston also with a nice gathering here tonight. Gabri, Aubrey Geyer comes out and Richter comes in and Geyer's had a pretty good third quarter, Cody. Really strong underneath the basket there on the rebounding side. Jada Jensen brings it across the timeline to baseline to Harder. Skip pass to Richter. Baseline to Huddleston. Maddie back to Richter. They'll go out top to Jensen. Right side to uh, Peyton Harder, 18 the shot clock. Inside to Jensen, short jumper, no good. And Pop snags the rebound for Creston. Fires over left side to Kronick. Give and go to Pop. Shot up and it's no good, but a foul called on Olsen down low. Atlantic with their first foul here in this second half. They had over 10 in the first half yeah, of play. Up to 11 here now for uh, fouls for Atlantic and uh, three for Creston there. And three for Peyton Harder. They had to take her out with over three minutes to go in that first half. Pops free throw good. Owen oh, Pop from the line now, two for three. Pop had nine first half points, 13 at the break, 16 for the game, now 17. She made both free throws. She has 17 of the 21 points for Creston. Lanik up 39 to 21. Here comes Jensen across the timeline to Huddleston high and left. Over to Maddie Richter, back to Huddleston. Jensen lost the handle. Now Harder scoops it up. Over to Huddleston and Dover shoots her, and it's a turnover. And here comes Aubrey Geyer in. Kira Olson comes out. Jensen, Geyer, Huddleston, Richter, and Peyton Harder in for Atlantic. We've got a timeout called, and we'll take it with them. We're back in 30 seconds on 95.7 FM and live video stream on Western Iowa Today. Com. From start to finish, let Aiken Design Center help you with your kitchen or bathroom ideas. 
For new designs or remodels, Aiken Design Center will work with you or your contractor to make your dream a reality. If you're not sure what you want, stop into our showroom so our custom designers can help you find what will suit your needs as well as your budget. The Aiken Design Center staff is committed to quality design while meeting your needs. Stop into Aiken today to find out how we can help. And welcome back. Atlantic with a 39-21 lead. Timeout was called, a 30-second timeout. Crest will have the basketball. Trojans led 30 to 15 at the halftime break, and they are up by 18 right now. Cohen, Kralik, Bailey is in now for Crest. It out to Cohen, high and right. Atlantic in that zone defense, that 1-2-2 zone into Ella Turner. Turn, shoots, no good, and Harder with a rebound. Harder averaging 10 a game. She's had her share tonight out to Jensen. 3-10 to go, third quarter. Pass to Huddleston left wing. Baseline Jensen uh, tipped out by Ella Turner. Nice hustle by the Creston guard. Just a 5-6 freshman is Ella Turner for Creston. We've got a number of uh, freshmen playing here on this squad. Maddie Huddleston will toss it in way out top to Jensen. Jensen one dribble back to Richter on the right side at the elbow. Richter off the screen, dribbles to the top of the circle. Leaves it off for Jensen, high and right. Back door, Peyton Harder, cut off by Pop into Geyer, and she puts it up, and it is in. <laughs> Aubrey Geyer assists by Peyton Harder. Geyer with four. Atlantic up by 20, their largest lead here, 41-21. And Crest at the other end gets a two from, uh, guess who, Dorn Pop, she's 19. 41-23 Trojans, Jensen high and left to Maddie Huddleston. Huddleston on the dribble, ricochets off her leg, picked up by Harder over to Richter. She'll fire a deep three, good! <laughs> Maddie Richter with three threes in the ball game for Atlantic. She has 13 points, and the Trojans up 44-23. Keely Cohen tried to go to Pop, and is tipped away by Jensen. 2.06 to go in the third quarter. Jana Jensen entered the contest with 10 steals. That's got to be, there we go, 22 steals coming in. And she's had at least four in this ball game tonight. Averaging about four steals a game, and she's right there here in the contest. Keely Cohen will throw it in way out top. Right side, Ella Turner, the freshman. And try to head it off, but Huddleston jumped the route. They try to go to Keely Cohen at right side. And to jump the passing route, Preston will toss it in. Down big here late third quarter. Turner with it high and right for the Panthers. The skip pass stolen by Richter. She'll tight rope the sideline and her tippy toe hit the red out of bounds line. It's going to be Preston's ball back the other way. Couldn't quite, quite get acrobatic there. And Richter with a nice hustle play got the steal. And then stepped out of bounds. Richter with... Five steals coming in. Cohen with it, left wing. Loops it down into Turner. She'll put it up off the glass, no good. And we got a whistle, and we got a foul. If it's on Harder, nope, it's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be on Harder. That's her fourth foul. So Kira Olson pops off the bench with 147 to go on the third. Peyton Harder with two, four, five, six, eight points. And four fouls. Ella Turner at the free throw line for Creston. First shot up, and it's good. Well, Turner's first points of the game. Olson in. Peyton Harder out. Turner hitting 43% of the free throw line. Now four for eight, so right at 50%. Her second free throw is lobbed up, and it is no good. Rebound Aubrey Geyer for Atlantic. She'll give it off to senior point guard Jada Jensen. Jensen to the front court against the 2 3 Creston zone out to Maddie Huddleston. Baseline to Jensen, loops it down to Olsen. It's uh, going to be thrown out of bounds. Atlantic wants to get it inside, but Doran Pop has done a great job of clogging up that middle. Yeah, Pop's been in that middle the whole time. You're seeing a lot more pressure um, on the outside here than what we saw the first half. They kind of stuffed the lane up a little bit, and now they're coming out blocking those three-point shots. There was quite a few, you know, scored by Atlantic there at the end of the second half. Well, it really was. the second quarter, excuse me. Yeah, probably more we've seen all year as Atlantic gets the steal. Joe just works the front court, and the ball almost picked off by Kralik. 
as they try to go to Richter right side. So Lenick will reset. They'll inbounds from the far sideline. 117 to go in the third quarter. Up by 20. 44-24 on the Seed Pro scoreboard. Huddleston, Geyer back to Huddleston left side. From the three-point line, sets and fires off the heel. And the rebound to Panthers. Aaliyah Cowell will bring it halfway and get across the timeline to Krolik. Krolik skip past near side. In the lineup is Reek, I believe. We'll check that here in just a moment. Pass high and left. Krolik on the move inside the block. We've got a whistle foul cold, I believe, on the Trojans. So that's uh, Holland. Reek is in the ball game. Holland Reek. Her dad, Chad Reek, is owner of the Creston radio station here. Great guy. Holland, just a freshman. Baseline drive, Randall into Pop. Layup, good. A good feed by Randall. And Pop with another bucket for Creston. She is 19 of the 26 points for the Panthers. Yeah, she's pretty much been open there in the lane, um, you know, and able to just lay it nice, easy layup there. That last foul was on Richter. That'd be her third foul. So Richter with three, Atlantic with the ball with 15 seconds to go in the third quarter. They'll keep it for the last shot. Down to 10. Jensen dribbling near the circle. Seven seconds, six. Over to Richter at four. Back to Jensen. Over to Huddleston at two. She'll fire at one. No good rims out. And that's it here in this third quarter Atlantic with a 44-26 lead. We'll be back in a minute on 95.7 FM and a live video stream on westerniowatoday.com. Our first Christmas, when you need parts or tools for your shop, you'll find it at CarQuest and Atlantic Ag and Auto, your only locally owned parts resource in Atlantic. We have shop air compressors, tools, air tanks, and welding supplies. We can make hydraulic hoses in-house in minutes. As the cold weather takes its toll on engine batteries, we have in stock batteries for big cats to cub cadets. We can get you started. Before or after hours, Atlantic Ag and Auto is your full-service CarQuest parts store. We're on the corner of 7th Street, across from the Lindemann Tractor, and here to serve you, the customer. After years of wondering why I see more runners than other athletes, I figured it out. Well, a sophomore hurdler explained it to me. This is Dr. Fritz Beyer of Body Basics Chiropractic, and he told me since my hips started acting up, I lost one second from my time. One second in a 55-second race is less than 2%, but he knew it instantly because the stopwatch told him. In other sports, there's not a stopwatch to tell you when the nagging injury takes 2% from you. To make sure you're giving your 100%, call 254-BODY to get your body back to the basics. Some restrictions apply. Loads are subject to credit approval. Equal housing opportunity. And welcome back to Crest Atlantic Cup. 44 to 26 on the Seed Pro scoreboard. Cody Weaver, Tom Robinson with you on 95.7 FM and live video stream at westerniowatoday.com. Panthers will start the final stands with the ball down big here. They go inside, layup up and miss by Calvin. Rebound Jada Jensen. Atlantic will have the ball back here early fourth quarter. Atlantic outscored the Panthers 30 to 15 at the halftime break. They scored 14 in this stanza. Maddie Richter high and right for three. Good. Richter's got her going. She has four threes in the ball game, Cody. Yeah, Geyer had that rebound there. Uh, Jensen brought it down the, the field, and you can see that they kind of have that lane plugged up. Nice steal there by Jada and draws the foul. Jump the passing route, Cody, and she went down the left side in the scoop shot. Draws a foul. That's going to be uh, four on Cresta now and three on Atlantic. As you mentioned earlier, they had 11 <laughs> fouls the first half. Yeah, they kind of Creston's got four <laughs> fouls and we have 12. So, <laughs> so here's Jada. Two free throws coming. First one rims out. Jensen has a three ball here in the ball game in the first half. She had uh, five, uh, ten points. Nine points, rather. Second free throw is no good. Missed them both. Ball tipped to Pop. And the Panthers move the front court. Cohen, Pop with it. Back out top. Baseline, Calvin. Calvin tries to move it out top. Krolik, baseline. Randall wide open. They leave her open. Back out top to Reek. Reek, just a freshman. Tries to go high post kick by Matty Huddleston. All in. Reek, a freshman, one of several here for Coach Neubauer on this uh, young squad. 
Reek will take the inbounds, addition right side, stolen by Jensen. She'll take it the length of the court, layup no good, foul on Reek. So that puts Jade on the free throw line for a pair. Jensen two for four from the line, and she just has a knack for the basketball. Yeah, Atlantic's been aggressive. Uh, you saw, you know, Maddie Huddleston with quite a few steals there in the first half. And, you know, the, the Atlantic girls are just long, have long arms, tall, got good reach, and they're able to pick that throw, those passes off quite a bit. Free throw by Jensen is good. 48-26 Atlantic with the lead. Jensen with 10 points. Her second free throw is on the way and good. Jensen 11 points. Richter leads with 16 off the bench. Crescent against the uh, zone defense by Atlantic. That trapping zone. Reek has it high and right. Holds the ball back out top to Calvin. Goes left wing to Cronick. High post to Pop. She'll stop and pop the shot. Good. Boy, Doran Pop is uh, quite a player. Just smooth. Then has a nice touch. All over the floor. You know, down in the paint. And then some outside jumper shots, too, there. 23 for Pop, Cody. And... Uh, you're right, she can hit him short, she can hit him deep. Richter, another three for Atlantic, no good. Rebound long to Geyer, Trojans reset. Back to Maddie Richter. Richter has 16 to lead Atlantic. Jada Jensen with 11, she has the ball top of the circle. 25 on the shot clock, plenty of time, six minutes to go on the game clock. Huddleston traveled. She had it left wing and then got it closely by Qualic. Oh, excuse me. There's be a, a foul, I think, on Pop there. So it's a foul on the uh, Panthers. Crowley call for the foul, just her first. And out of the lineup comes Reek and Avea Randall. Cohen back in. Atlantic with the ball. Jensen dumps it low to Geyer. Goes to work. Layup, God! Very Reek. nice pass there. Great pass on the inside there. And just turn and, and put that right in the hoop there. Geyer averaging six now, has seven for the game. 51-28 Atlantic. Crescent with it, high post pop, and it's tipped away by Jensen. She'll take it all the way down, layup, good! Jada Jensen with the two, she has 13, and timeout called. Atlantic of 53, 28, five and a half to play. We'll take a one minute timeout at 95.7 FM at westerniowatoday.com. Our first Christmas. After years of wondering why I see more runners than other athletes, I figured it out. Well, a sophomore hurdler explained it to me. This is Dr. Fritz Beyer of Body Basics Chiropractic, and he told me since my hips started acting up, I lost one second from my time. One second in a 55-second race is less than 2%, but he knew it instantly because the stopwatch told him. In other sports, there's not a stopwatch to tell you when the nagging injury takes 2% from you. To make sure you're giving your 100%, call 254-BODY to get your body back to the basics. Cass Health in Atlantic, Iowa is a nationally recognized hospital, and we are proud of the awards and all of our recent accomplishments. But do you know what drives us to be the very best? You. We're passionate about helping our patients heal and feel their very best at any age and any stage of life. Cass Health, neighbors caring for neighbors. Um, today. Some restrictions supply, loans, reception, credit approval, equal housing opportunity. Welcome back as Crescent has the basketball. Baseline jumper missed, and Jensen swoops in for the rebound for the Trojans. Lenica 53 to 28, 515 to go here in the game after the timeout. Jensen has a top of the circle, right side of Richter. She's open, didn't take the three, so drive the baseline. And a foul called on Quest, and that'll be number seven on them, right? We'll see here with the bonus shot. They're showing six on the board here. Three fouls now on Calvin. And jumping in the lineup is Zoe Kirkhoff for Maddie Huddleston. Also into the lineup, and you're right, Cody, six now is a count for Crest, and they're seven. <laughs> Inbounds to Richter and Keeley Cohen. Got a rib on her. So it's going to be Richter, the free throw line for Atlantic. Trojans up 53 to 28. Here in the ball game, and we'll have the boys game coming up right after this one. Free throws by Richter. She has 16 points. Career high for her, just a sophomore. Misses the free throw. Rebound, Creston. Ball near side to Keely Cohen. Gets out of the trap to Chronic. 
Thought it got it by Zoe Kirkhoff. Gets it across the timeline. Cut off nicely by Jensen. They're going to call a foul on Jensen. <laughs> so it's going to be Preston's ball out of bounds. That'll be four in Atlantic here. Jensen with one. That's her first foul. 450 left. Bailey. Oh, off the fingertips of Ella Turner left wing. She wanted to turn her. And so the ball belongs to Atlantic. Maddie Richter will throw it in for the Trojans. Atlantic plays at home against Kemper on Tuesday night. You can't make it. We'll have it on your TV and on the radio as well. Here comes Jada Jensen across the timeline. The left side is Zoe Kirkhoff. Back to Jensen. In high post harder. Baseline Geyer driving. Shot up. Good! Aubrey Geyer averaging six points a game. And she has nine here in the game tonight. She took it to the rim. 55-28 Atlantic. 4.20 to play. Panthers with it. Keeley Cohen high and right. Baseline Bailey. Back out top. Krolik almost traveled. Was able to hold it down. And Keeley Cohen for three. Shot. Sails long. Rebound Turner. Scoop shot. Good. Nice job by Ella Turner. She has three points for Creston. Just four points for the Panthers here in this fourth quarter. Atlantic at 55 to 30. We dip under four to play. Zoe Kirkhoff, bounce pass stolen away nicely by Bailey. Layup is blocked by Jensen. And they're gonna call a foul on Jensen, the out official. Called the foul. It'll be two shots for Creston. Bailey will shoot him. Adley Bailey, a 5-4 freshman. Look at her first uh, points of the game. Free throws, no good off the back iron. I think you'll see for the next few years, this freshman class for both schools, you know, have a lot of girls and a lot of girls playing, uh, some varsity anyway, throughout the game. So there's going to be some pet competitive games as we go forward well, here. No question. Cody and you see Kirkhoff coming in from Atlantic and Wiederstein and then all those freshmen for Creston. He throw is good. First point of the game for Bailey. Atlantic with a basketball. Trojans have Wiederstein in now. Two freshmen in for Atlantic. Wiederstein and now Kirkhoff handles the ball. And a senior Jada Jensen. Baseline to Geyer. Geyer whips it out top to Jada. She'll swing it right to Wiederstein. Wiederstein just has that Athleticism, you can see, just a freshman. Kirkhoff driving in the trees, has it batted away, and the Panthers get it back. They'll get it out left side to Reek. She's a freshman for Creston. Pop, lose it, back up is Calvin, then a foul on Harder. That'll be that'll be five, I believe, on Harder. Yep, yeah, that'll be the game for Peyton Harder as she fouls out of ball game. Harder with five fouls. Free throws coming up for Leah Calvin. The first one's on the way, and it's good. Harder, you know, <clears throat> uses her leverage and height and everything right there under the basket without getting those rebounds and moves people around really well. Eight points for Harder tonight. Second free throw good by Calvin. She has four points to four crested. Atlantic a 55-33, nearly the three-minute mark to play here in this one. Jensen across the timeline. Whips it left side to Zoe Kirkhoff. Back out top to Jada Jensen. Right side to Wiederstein. She'll low, throw it low to Geyer. Layup foul called inside on Brent Tussey, a 5'8 freshman. There's another freshman in there for Creston. Boy, you're, and, and, yeah. Coach Dubauer's got the future here. We've He's, got another freshman coming in for Atlantic here. Uh, we'll be subbing in uh, Schrader. So Schrader will be stepping in. So now you'll have Wiederstein, Schrader, and Kirkhoff, three freshmen for Atlantic and probably with two seniors. Geyer at the free throw line for the Trojans. Free throw on the way, and it is good. Probably Geyer's had a nice second half scoring the basketball. Just 10 points here in the ball game. Panthers have the ball and a steal by Jensen. Over to Zoe Kirkhoff, layup is good! And Zoe Kirkhoff, the freshman, gets her first varsity points. Atlantic 
Up 57 another 33. Another steal down another to Kirkhoff. <laughs> layup good. Assist Jensen and Kirkhoff with another layup uh, for Atlantic. Yeah, they're going to go ahead and sub in here, but. Uh, Jensen comes out, what a night she's had, what a season she's had so far. Schrader is in, Avery Knuth is in, Wienerstein with Olsen. Ball out top, and Coach Neubauer empties his bench. Reek for three, no good, and Knuth with the rebound. We're going to see Abby Richter come in as well, the senior for Atlantic. 2.15 to go. Wienerstein to Knuth. Knuth on the drive, lose the handle, picked up by Cresta. Oh, we got a jump ball. Maybe a jump ball there, hard play. Schroeder, nice job for the Trojans uh, diving in. Be so, go back to Atlantic there on that jump ball arrow. Trojans have the ball on the arrow. Schroeder is in. Here Olsen comes out, another nice night for her. She does a lot of stuff away from the ball. Schroeder for three, missed. Rebound Knuth for Atlantic. Back to Schroeder, she's got another open three. She'll fire it, no good off the back iron. And the rebound comes off to a J.C. Hansen for Creston. Down low to Reek, layup long, and a rebound called on Schroeder for Atlantic as the both coaches empty their benches. Atlantic will go three straight this week. Went over Clint on Tuesday, Cody, and went last night against ACGC, holding the Chargers to 13. They held uh, Clarinda just over 30 points. Free throw by Reek is no good. Holland Reek, second free throw, just a freshman. Second free throw coming up. 155 to play. Free throws on the way, and it is no good. Rebound inside is missed by Tussie. Another rebound there. It's another rebound, and now Creston. the ball is loose. Be a jump ball. It should be Creston's ball this time. And the arrow favors it. Look at the arrow. Looks. I think they switched it here. Yeah, it's going to be Creston's ball. So the inbounds for Reek with 147 to go on 28 in the shot clock. I think he's the guy at the uh, scores bench. He's on the ball. I think he switched to he, he <laughs> too knew early. What, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're gonna have just to get that lined up here. So it's gonna be Creston's ball, and he's supposed to wait and switch it after it comes in. But he's just doing a great job there. Creston gets the inbounds. They go baseline to Reed, guarded by Canoe. Hook shot, no. Rebound comes off to Schrader for Atlantic. Trojans clear it out. Schrader across the timeline. The youngsters getting to play in this blowout. Right side of Wienerstein for three. That's uh, Kirkhoff for three and knocks it down. Zoe Kirkhoff with seven points here in the fourth quarter. Atlantic up to 63-33. Preston baseline. Reek has it. He'll put off the glass. Missed the shot. Rebound Knuth. 1.13 to go. We'll hear from the Atlantic head boys coaches coming up. During our pregame show, brought to you by Outfitters Plus Outlet Store. Wiederstein for two missed. Rebound Panthers. We'll hear from Coach Hall, who was not there on Tuesday night. Was under the weather, but he uh, called him on Thursday. I'm uh, feeling a lot better, and he'll be here tonight. Panthers uh, try to get the bucket the other end. We'll also hear from Bryce Schaefer, head coach for Creston. Wiederstein across the timeline for Atlantic. High and right to Kirkhoff. She has seven points. Back to Wiederstein, to Knuth. 36 seconds to go and a steal by Creston and then a foul called on Wienerstein. That yep. was a block below the waist, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Wienerstein has some good blocking techniques there. <laughs> you know, the, the, the nice part about these freshmen, you know, they're getting experience here, but they play, play, a lot of these girls have played a lot of competition outside of here at high level. So stepping in here at this game, you know, they don't feel near as much pressure. Great point to free throw by Reek is no good. Rebound Wiederstein for Atlantic. Trojans have the ball in the front court with 27 seconds to go. Schroeder, Schrader rather, to Richter. Knuth, skip pass to Schrader. He'll give it off to Kirkhoff. Kirkhoff, the freshman, has seven points here in the second half. Avery Knuth at the top. We're down to 10 seconds to go here. Knuth, a dribble, or a Kirkhoff, rather, to Wienerstein. Back near side of Knuth, Atlantic 63-33. Another solid defensive performance and their third straight win. They go to 4-2 on the year. The final Atlantic 63, 
Now they're going to call. A, there's point two left here on the clock here. And I'm not sure what they're. Now he said ball game now. The yeah. official did. So. Yep. 63-33 as they call the game. And I'm not sure. <laughs> Creston fans are too uh, fond of that one. <laughs> <laughs> There's still point two on the clock. I'm not sure exactly what the tap on the head means, but um, okay. that's what the officials did out there with point two, and then the, the main official came over and said no game and All right. called it a game. So. That's it. Atlantic uh, wins big here. The Trojans have won all three games this week. Tuesday again. Thursday and again tonight. So the Trojans... 63-33. Post game show coming up brought to you by Cass Health. Neighbors caring for neighbors will check the scoring right after this. Get a little extra dough this holiday season at Community First Credit Union. If you're one of the many who need a little extra help this time of year, you're going to love our holiday loan special. We're offering a rate lower than most credit cards, no collateral requirements, and an easy online or in-branch application. This loan is excellent for holiday shopping, consolidating your debt, and more. To apply, stop by your local C-First branch or apply online at c1stcu.com today. Some restrictions apply. Loans are subject to credit approval Equal housing opportunity. Request of the boys out warming up, and we'll get to that free game coming up here in a moment. Let's take a look at the scoring for Atlantic. Peyton Harder, who had foul troubles all night, uh, finished with eight points. Jada Jensen had 13. Maddie Huddleston, eight points. She had two three pointers in the game. Kira Olson with two. Elbury Geyer had a great second half. Scored us in the first half, but came out in the second and scored 10 points. Uh, for Atlantic over her average of a six a game. But it's Maddie Richter that had a career night for Atlantic. The sophomore hit four three-point shots in the ball game and ended up with 14 point, or, uh, 16 points for Atlantic. She had a 1, 2, 3, 4, 12. Either for 14, 16 points, she was two for three for the free throw line, 16 for Richter. And also Zoe Kirkhoff, the freshman, came in and scored seven for Atlantic. The Trojans with three and double the figures. Maddie Richter with 16. Jada Jensen with 13. And Aubrey Geyer with the 10. Well, it was uh, all a door and pot tonight for the uh, Creston Panthers. She did the bulk of the scoring all night. First quarter of play, she had nine points, 13 at halftime. And then she picked up uh, another six points. She had 19 at 21. She had 23 uh, to lead uh, Creston. Other scores for the Panthers, Nevaeh Hall, uh, Randall with the two points in the game. Also, uh, Ella Turner came in off the bench and scored three. Hadley Bailey went one for two from the free throw line. And Leah Calvin with the four points uh, for the uh, Panthers here in the contest. Uh, once again, the final Atlantic 63-33 over the uh, Creston Panthers here in our first of two tonight here at the Creston. Well, the boys game is coming up next. Our coaches show brought to you by Outfitters Plus Outlet Store, your home for personalized Trojan apparel in Atlantic. We're back with a visit with Atlantic head coach Derek Hall right after this from Outfitters Plus Outlet Store. Outfitters, Outfitters Plus in Atlantic is making it easier for teams, coaches, groups, and you to host your group's orders online with their online store. Custom printed shirts, sweatshirts, all of your team apparel. Outfitters will design the graphics, post them on the web, give you the link to share with your team or group, and they can order themselves all online. No more order forms to lose, sizes to keep track of, or money to hold on to. Let Outfitters Plus set up an online store for your team or group today. Give them a call at 243 40 That's 243-4379. Outfitters Plus in Atlantic. At Second Street Auto, it's our mission to get you back on the road fast. And it all starts with free local towing. Once you're back at the shop, we talk you through your car repair with a free and fair estimate. We do everything in-house so you know who's working on your car. Our Hercules tires come with free road hazard repair, free rotation for the life of the tires, and a free alignment check. And nobody can beat our transmission rebuild and repair experts. Brakes, tune-ups, oil changes, preventative maintenance, and service work make Second Street your first stop. Hey, Creon, what do you like most about track? Competing and the strategy with each race. That's just like how Dad and the Seed Pros place different products on different farms. So true. 
Just like every race brings a different challenge, every field has its own challenges. The Seed Pros partner with each operation to ensure the right product is placed on the right acre. Unmatched year round service with the expertise to help you win on every acre. The Seed Pros, with you from the word go. The Seed Pros, Mark Bantacker, Gary Dinklet, Nick Knutson, and John Becker. Chosen by the motivated, chosen by the hard working. Um, you know, they're pretty guard heavy. Um, and they're all really skilled. They can all shoot the ball, handle it, put it on the floor. Um, and then they're going to get into our shorts and kind of try to get it to speed us up and turn us over. So as long as we just handle their pressure um, and just get into the half court and execute our stuff, we should be in a good spot to get the win. Kyle Strider, 29 points in two games, almost 15 a game. And Kale Turner, 26, averaging 13. Talk about those two uh, guys and their styles here. Um, you know, Kyle's been around um, for a few years. Um, we really kind of focused our game plan on him last year, um, and he's, he he did just fine. Um, so we're going to have to try to take him out of the game and kind of control him and contain him as best we can. You know, he's going to get his because he's a really good player, so we just got to do our best on him. Um, Kale was a first-year starter last year, I believe. Um, sophomore, he kind of struggled at first. Um, just shooting the ball wise, and then he kind of hit a couple against us early in the first quarter in the first game against last year, and th- I think that kind of propelled him for the rest of the year. So you know we got to have a ha- high hand on him um, and respect him as a shooter and a playmaker because um, he's really good at both. So those two are a handful, and it's always tough going into crest in the play, especially on a Friday night. No doubt about it. Well, what do you want to see for your team now? You'll build off that win against Clarenda last to Tuesday. What about tonight now? What do you want to see improved and uh, and build upon here? Uh, just keep building on our defensive execution um, and then just finishing the possessions um, with rebound, getting out in transition, trying to get easy buckets. Um, if you can get stops and rebound and get out and go on the break and get easy buckets, um, that just makes it a lot easier for your offense. So you're not always trying to pull teeth in the half court because Creston's always good defensively. Um, so I anticipate nothing else tonight. Coach, I always appreciate your time. Thanks a bunch. Best of luck. We'll talk to you after the game. Yep, thanks so much. Thanks for having me on. Coach's show brought to you by Outfitters Plus Outlet Store, your home for Trojan Apparel. Creston Head Boys basketball coach Bryce Schaefer joins us next. Outfitters Plus in Atlantic is making it easy. Live video streaming on westerniowatoday.com is courtesy of Nishnanet. Offering always fast internet with no gimmick pricing to select rural areas of Cass and Audubon counties. Nishinanet is a local company with local technicians and offers unlimited data on most of their internet plans. Learn more about Nishinanet and their services and products by going to their website at nishinanet.com. Nishinanet.com, technically awesome. 4379 Outfitters Plus in Atlantic. And Creston head basketball coach Bryce Schaefer joins us here on the Outfitters Plus Outlet Store coaches show one and one in the season coach you talk about this year's 2022-23 crew it's an interesting group we're heavy at the top with seniors we've got eight in the the senior class um got another five uh, juniors and then a couple of sophomores to round out the varsity group this year um but we've got a lot of experience coming back from from last year's team a lot of uh, a lot of scoring um a lot of assists but we're just not nearly the, the size we have been in the past. We, we uh, are a bit of a smaller unit, but I think that plays into, you know, what we wanted to do this year anyway. We're a little bit more up-tempo, um, trying to be, you know, pressure-oriented defensively and, um, you know, just, just looking to make the pace of the game um, at our level, especially with the, with the addition of the 35-second shot clock. Um, not so much on the offensive end for us, but on the defensive end, using using that to our advantage and really having tough defensive possessions and, and putting them in uh, our opponents in some tougher situations before uh, before that shot clock expiration. So we had a we had a tough first game against Winterset. Um, we just didn't shoot the ball very well, and they shot the ball excellent. And that's a really quality team, and I'm glad we were able to start with them the beginning of the year and uh you know we got a good win against a, a st albert team um on tuesday and you know looking forward to the next opportunity to see what our guys can do next opportunity tonight coach schaefer and talk about facing atlantic yeah i, I mean atlantic is well coached group they've got they've got some excellent players um rasmus and kid is is, is really tough McLaren's going to be uh, um, a, a different, difficult matchup for us just because we're not um, the same size. He's a, he's a physical player. Um, 
I just I like the the distribution of their team. They've got some some players that haven't been playing in the last couple of years that are stepping up, and uh, you know we're just looking to play our game, try and try and get up tempo, get to the free throw line. And uh, hopefully shoot the ball as well as we did against St. Albert from the perimeter. Coach, anything else to add? No, no. I, I appreciate the opportunity for the interview. And, um, you know, we're looking forward to an opportunity to, to get our second victory of the year. Coach Bryce Schaefer, head coach, the Crescent Panthers, joining us. Coach, thanks a bunch. Uh, best of luck tonight. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. We'll be back with the starting lineups and the first Whitney Bank opening tip off right here on 95.7 FM and live video streamed at westerniowatoday.com. Hey, Kriyan, what do you like most about track? Competing and the strategy with each race. That's just like how Dad and the Seed Pros place different products on different farms. So true. Just like every race brings a different challenge, every field has its own challenges. The Seed Pros partner with each operation to ensure the right product is placed on the right acre. Unmatched year-round service with the expertise to help you win on every acre. The Seed Pros, with you from the word go. The Seed Pros, Mark Fantacker, Gary Dinklet, Nick Knutson, and John Becker. Gas prices got you down? Need a ride to work or the grocery store? There's public transportation for everyone in Southwest Iowa. SWIDA offers taxi service in Atlantic, Glenwood, Harlan, Missouri Valley, Red Oak, and Shenandoah. $2.50 each way or $2 for seniors 60 years and older. Just call 1-800-842-8065 or visit SWIDA.com to schedule your ride. The Super Bowl in Atlantic is a staple of Cass County get-togethers. From family reunions, birthday parties, night out with friends, and a fun date night, the Super Bowl has always been here. With glow bowling on Fridays and Saturdays, bumpers and ramps for kids, anyone can have a blast at the Super Bowl. Get the ball rolling on your next night out and get together. Call Dan at 243-4656 to book the Super Bowl in Atlantic. Chosen by the motivated. Chosen by the hardworking. Chosen by soybean growers everywhere. Stein Seed is built on legendary soybean genetics. Our decades of research have resulted in Stein Enlist E3 brand soybeans, which offer superior weed control, higher yield performance, and ease of use. For soybeans, choose Stein because Stein has yield. Your field will prove you right. For more information on Stein E3 and more Stein products, contact Trey Bricks at 712-249-2503. Question is the Atlantic Trojans, the Creston Panthers warm up, getting ready for this one in a girls game. Atlantic wins at 63 to 33 uh, over Creston. Coach Schaefer talked about this uh, basketball team and they're one and one on the season. They just played a pair of games. St. Albert to win their 83 to 66 and then they fell short to a winner set of that opener on November 28th to 74 to 47. They responded nicely with that win over winner St. Albert by the score of 83 to a 66. When you look at uh, the numbers for the Panthers, Cale Turner leads the team in scoring, averaging 13 points a game and to six rebounds. Kyle Strider, well, Strider actually leads the team with 15 points, eight rebounds, and then Turner averaging 13 points and six rebounds. Noah Fili- or, uh, Patrick Varner will start, averages nine a game and six rebounds for Creston uh, here in this ball game. You'll see Jake Hoyt also. He's uh, contributed. He's played in both games. Has not started uh, in the contest. Also, uh, nine points per game average for Hoyt, just a sophomore, uh, seven of thirteen. He won't get a start, but we'll probably see him come in. Kyle Strider. He's the guy, though. Uh, Strider, quarterback for the Creston Panther football team, a really good athlete. As I mentioned, he has eight rebounds per game, has 17 total in this young season, five assists, four steals, and 29 points. And then you have Kale Turner. Turner number three, and Strider number 33 for Creston. For Atlantic, uh, I'll tell you what, uh, they beat Clarenda on Tuesday, 53-41. We had it here on our live video stream, westerniowatoday.com, and on the radio here at 95.7 FM in Atlantic. Wins 53-41 against a pretty good Corinda basketball team. And in that game, Carter Pellet had 21 rebounds. Just 32 rebounds are coming in. Ahead of that, Glenwood beat Atlantic 
50, uh, 70 to 53, and ADM topped the Trojans 68 37 last weekend. For the Trojans, Jax McClare, and he's been the horse inside. 11 points per game average. Colton Rasmussen got it going last Tuesday night. He is averaging 13. Rasmussen with 40 total points. Jax McLaren with 33 uh, total points uh, coming in. And then you have uh, Ryder Burke averaging four. Caden Anderson with three-point average. Uh, Jaden Pearl averaging three points a game. And Carter Pellet averaging nine points a game, but ten rebounds after that big, big board game against the Cardinals last the Tuesday night. Starting lineups are coming up here in a moment. Our opening tip-off is brought to you by the First Whitney Bank, a local bank, the only bank you'll ever need. First Whitney Bank brings us our tip-off. Don't you just... First Whitney Bank is the longest-standing locally-owned bank in Atlantic, and as such, we take pride in how we serve our community. For generations, we have been involved with our customers and their families by getting involved in community events and by supporting technology and teaching financial literacy in our schools. You'll also see our support of athletics on the scoreboards at home events. It's this involvement that allows us to know our customers and their families for generations. First Whitney Bank, the only bank you'll ever need. Member FDIC. Welcome back to the Creston Gymnasium here in Creston, Iowa. Bryce Schaefer, head coach for the Panthers, head coach for Atlantic. Derek Call in his second year. As we'll take a look at the starting lineups here for Atlantic. They'll start the same lineup they did against Corinna. Why not? <laughs> good, good omen there with that win. Kenny Jewell, the 5 9 sophomore, will start. At a guard for the Trojans, Jewel averaging two points a game. Jaden Pearl, the 6'3 senior, will be at a guard uh, for Atlantic, averaging three points a contest. Colton Rasmussen, 6'3 junior, will play a forward uh, for the Trojans. So Rasmussen averaging 13, as we mentioned, and Jackson McLaren, that tough inside guy at 6'3 senior, will round up the five for the Trojans. Kenny Jewel, Jaden Pearl, Colton Rasmussen, and a Carter Pellet, Jax McLaren starting for Atlantic. For the Panthers, uh, they'll start to Kale Turner, a 6'1 junior. Logan Anson, a 6'2 senior, will start. He's averaging eight points a game. Patrick Barner, a 6'1 senior. Ethan Crawford, a 5'11 senior. And Kyle Strider, a 6'3 senior. Your starters for Bryce Schaefer, head coach for uh, Clarinda. Opening tip-off is the coming up. We're back right after this 30-second timeout. Gas prices got you down? Need a ride to work or the grocery store? There's public transportation for everyone in southwest Iowa. SWIDA offers taxi service in Atlantic, Glenwood, Harlan, Missouri Valley, Red Oak, and Shenandoah. $2.50 each way or $2 for seniors 60 years and older. Just call 1-800-842-8065 or visit SWIDA.com to schedule your ride. Newton and John Becker. Welcome back to Quest, and here we go, Atlantic. Getting the contest with a 1-2 and two record. Panthers are 1-1 one and one coming into tonight's contest with a win over St. Albert's and a loss to Winterset. Atlantic fell short to Glenwood ADM and a win over the Clinic Cardinals. Colton Rasmussen with some springs in his legs. He'll be jumping it up against Varner. Patrick Varner, 6'1", senior. Rasmussen stands 6'3", and a junior. Atlantic left to right on your radio, as you can see on your screen. And Creston right to left. The live video streaming at westerniowatoday.com, KS957. Jump is controlled by Varner. And the Panthers start with the basketball. Uh, bringing the across is Kale Turner. Back out top to Ethan Crawford. And Crawford to Turner. Panthers, and Atlantic comes out of the man defense, but clearing on Strider. He draws the top shooter for Creston. Near side to Anson for three. Good! Logan Anson comes out and knocks down the triple right out of the gate. And the Panthers take a 3-0 lead to the seed pro scoreboard. Kenny Jewell bringing it across the sophomore point guard for Atlantic. Jewell off the screen of Rasmussen angles, right hands off the pellet. Pellet right side to Rasmussen. He'll fire a deep three. No good. Could answer. Pe Rasmussen rebounds, and it's off his hand. Scooped up by Turner. Turner in the block. Layup is good. They're going to call the foul on the floor. 
And the ball will be out of bounds, Creston's way. Cale Turner will toss it in. Logan Anson in there along with Patrick Varner, Ethan Crawford, and Kyle Strider. Entry pass, looks, looks, and he kicks it out to way out top. Crawford driving, loops it low to Strider. Layup is good. Strider gets the bucket, 5-0. Panthers off on a 5-0 run right out of the gate. Across the timeline, Jaden Pearl, Carter Pellet, head fake. Short J from the elbow, missed. Rebound pulled out by Crawford. Foul called on Preston. Just underway here, and the Panthers off to a 5-0 run here in the first quarter. A three ball by Anson. And then Strider with two. Free throws for Pellet. He'll shoot a pair here for Lenny. Try to get him on the board here, break the ice. Free throw good by Carter Pellet. Pellet averages nine a game coming in. Pellet's second of free throw is up in the air, and it is off the back iron. Rebound, Jackson McLaren. Lanning gets another chance. Rasmussen baseline drive, layup, no good. Rebound, Pellet. He'll put it back up and in. Well, Pellet controlled those boards inside. He just rooted that one out, Cody. He's back to the roundup or rebound game. 5-3, Panthers by a pair. They'll move the ball high and right to Crawford. He'll attack. Back out top to Strider. Head fake against McLaren. Leaves it left to Turner for three. No good. Pellet knocks the rebound to Jewel. Oh, to Pearl. Lanik on the move. Ahead to McLaren. He'll lay it up. No good. Foul call on Strider. Trojans running. And Jackson McLaren will took the pass and missed the shot, but he gets the and one for the Trojans. 5-3, Panthers on top. Two fouls on Creston early, one on Atlantic. Here's McLaren's free throw, good. 5-4, Panthers lead cut to one of the seed pros scoreboard. Second attempt by Jackson. McLaren is on the way and it is no good. Just kisses off the front of the iron. Panthers rebound and they'll bring it to the front court. Lay it up, Turner missed the shot, foul of the Trojans. So Atlantic now with two fouls, Creston two. Free throws uh, coming up for Keel Turner, 6-1 junior. Turner averaging 13 a game. Behind Strider's 15, Keel Turner's free throw good. Turner in the score column. Six to four, Panthers by two on the seed pro scoreboard. Turning out six of 12 from the free throw line, a 50 percenter. Second free throw coming up for the 6-1 junior. He dips his knees and lobs it up, and it is no good off the back iron, and a rebound by Rasmussen, and it's tipped in by Creston. Jewell gets it. Here come the Trojans. Kenny Jewell to Jaden Pearl. High post to Pallet. He'll take it back out top of the circle. The senior over to Pearl. Pearl back out top to Jewel. Pellet baseline, loops it low to McLaren. He'll take it to the rack layup. God! Tied at six. Jackson McLaren with three points. McLaren averaging 11 coming in. Kale Turner drives, stops, pops, no good. Pellet with a rebound. Well, talk about Pellet's position in there, Cody. Always right under the hoop there, you know, able to come up and get that ball. Carter Pellet out top to Rasmussen. We're tied at six. Oh, the ball poked away by Turner. And he'll have to fire down low. The Strider layup is good. They're going to call to the floor, though. Pellet called with a foul on Kyle Strider. Turner with the steal. He has four on the season with that pick there. And in the lineup is Ryder Burke for Kenneth Jewell, the sophomore. Ryder Burke averaging four a game. Burke a 6-1 senior for Atlantic. Now will play the point. Inbounds pass is tipped away by Rasmussen. Goes to the backcourt, and Strider will retrieve it for Creston. 6-6, 5-11 to play, first quarter. Strider has it for the Panthers. Near side of Kale Turner. Turner back right side of Crawford. Ethan Crawford on the move. Goes to the free throw line. Fires it under and missed his mark with Logan Anson. And a turnover, Creston. Lana gets the ball back. Pellet will throw it in for the baseline. Creston, full court pressure defense. The man-to-man coverage. Carter Pellet, uncontested, throwing it in to Ryder Burke. 
He's picked up by Cale Turner. Pass head to Pallet. Coaches break the press. They try to get it low. McLaren saves a turnover. Atlantic will keep it and reset. 4.48 to play. First quarter. Ryder Burke. Carter Pallet. Pallet has the basketball. Over to Ryder Burke. Down low. McLaren pushes it up good. Atlantic with an 8-6 lead. Trojans take a lead on McLaren's layup. McLaren has five points. Basketball belongs to Crested. Strider out to Ethan Crawford. A 4-19 to go in the first quarter. 8-6 Trojans. Crawford guarded by Rasmussen. Takes it to the rack. Layup is tipped by Rasmussen. Pellet rebound. Pass ahead to Ryder Burke. He'll go all the way down under. Layup is no good. Rebound McLaren, and he tips it back out top. And Varner on the move. Varner all the way down. Layup no good. And Rasmussen called for goaltending. <laughs> that was uh, certainly above the rim. That was a good call. <laughs> I'll tell you, Colton, can, he can leap. He got up there. I think that ball was just above the heel of the rim, and he got a hand on it. So the bucket for Creston. Let's see who they accredited the bucket to. 8-8 tie, Atlantic with the basketball. Loaded with Pearl driving, layup, God! He draws the foul, Jaden Pearl. Gets the and one for Atlantic. Uh-oh. Maybe a technical there. So Pearl will be at the line, and uh, there's going to be a technical foul called, I believe, uh, on the Panthers. It, said, it looked like he said 53, but. So Pearl will shoot free throws here. They're trying to get things sorted out. Coach Hall wanted an explanation. He's satisfied. So Jaden Pearl will step the line after the technical foul. Lennox is up 10 to 8. Free throw by Jaden is good. Nobody on the free throw line. Jaden Pearl with three points. Pearl averages three a game coming in. Now Rasmussen will, uh, will shoot. Well, Rasmussen will step in. Pearl with three, and Colton Rasmussen at the free throw line. Yet to score tonight. Rasmussen shooting 81% from the line. He's by far best free throw shooter here. With 13 of 16 attempts, free throw was in and out, no good. <laughs> Thanks for oh, jinxed I think him. you jinxed him. Yeah, I think he made <laughs> nine out of nine or ten out of ten on Tuesday he night. And You're right. He was 100% from the line there. So at one point he was 10 for 10. Free throw, Rasmussen, good. Yeah, you're right. In fact, he was perfect for the line. Didn't miss a free throw. Atlantic up 12 to eight. They get the ball back on the technical foul. Carter Pelt will throw it in to Ryder Burke. We're down to 350 to go in the first quarter. Atlantic up by four on the Seed Pro scoreboard. Burke back out top to Rasmussen inside of McLaren. Foul called on Carter Wiley that's in right now. He's guarded McLaren down low. There's kind of a mismatch with Wiley at 5'10. And Jax McLaren at 6'3. Ryder Burke will toss it for the baseline. Five fouls on Crest in first quarter. McLaren down low, Pellet wrap around, good. What a great look by McLaren and Pellet with a wrap around. Yeah, time out there, uh, Creston. 14 to 8, we'll take it with them back in a minute. A 95.7 FM and live stream at westerniowatoday.com. When you need parts or tools for your shop, you'll find it at CarQuest and Atlantic Ag and Auto, your only locally owned parts resource in Atlantic. We have shop air compressors, tools, air tanks, and welding supplies. We can make hydraulic hoses in-house in minutes. As the cold weather takes its toll on engine batteries, we have in stock batteries for big cats to cub cadets. We can get you started. Before or after hours, Atlantic Ag and Auto is your full-service CarQuest parts store. We're on the corner of 7th Street across from the Lindemann Tractor and here to serve you, the customer. Welcome back as the Trojans now open up an 11-14-8 lead. Panthers have the basketball. Patrick Varner will take the inbounds. In the first quarter, 
Coaches with four players scoring. Barnum will drive in the paint, kicks it right baseline. A three ball up and no good. And the rebound, the crest, and Anderson just takes it away. Gavin Mills Legal in there. His Rasmussen short jumper off the glass, no good. Strider rebound. Panthers have it to the front court. Al Strider, step back three, missed. A long rebound it comes off the hands of Wiley. Back to Strider against Pellet. Backs in, almost stolen by Burke. Giving a go pass to Wiley. Out of bounds, turnover. Oh, they're going to say Black touched it last. 14 to 8. Gladdy up by 6 of the Seed Pro scoreboard. 2.58 to play. Inbounds pass from Parker Varner. It gets out top to Jake Hoyt. You talk about Hoyt off the bench. Just the sophomores had some solid numbers first couple of games. Parker Varner out top to Patrick Varner. And a whistle. We got a foul called on the Trojans. That'll be number four. Here comes Turner back in. That'll be five on Atlantic there. Yeah. So it'll be five on Atlantic, five on Creston. Throwing the ball in will be Kale Turner. They still haven't moved it off of four. Here's Turner back out top. Driving inside. Pump fake shot up by Hoyt. No good. Rebound Ryder Burke. And a jump ball is called. 2.41 to go. In this first quarter's coach Bryce Schaefer goes into his bench. Turner is in there right now. Hoyt is in there. Wiley is in there. Parker Varner also. Pellet with it down inside to Hutsey. Almost throws it away. There's a scramble for it. Panthers get it. They'll bring it to the front court. Pass ahead near side to Kale Turner. Back out top to Parker Varner. He'll drive in. Parker's layup. There's no good, but a foul called on Hutsey. Preston attacking the rim. Jake Hoyt with the attempt. He's averaging nine points a game. Hoyt just a sophomore, 6'3 sophomore. Atlantic up 14 8, 218 to play in the first quarter of the seed. Pro scoreboard. Hoyt's free throw is no good. We'll have a second one coming. The sophomore is four of eight now from the charity stripe. 50% free throw shooter. Hoyt's second free throw is on the way, and it's good. Boy, Hoyt's a good-looking player. Just a sophomore for the Panthers. 14-9, Atlantic's lead is five on the seed post scoreboard. 2.50 to go in the first quarter. Ryder Burke to Hudson. Left side, Anderson. He'll tack the rim. Layup is good. Caden Anderson off the bench gets the layup. He averages three a game. It's 16 to 9. Trojans 158 to play, and Pellet call for the foul. That's two on Pellet, I believe. Six on Atlantic. McLaren is out. In comes Jaden Pearl. And Pearl will take Pellet out. So, Coach. Derek Hall going a three deep into his bench with Burke, Anderson, Hutsey playing here in the first quarter, under two to play. Kick out to Strider, back to Kale Turner, time of the circle, got by Anderson. Turner, Anson, a deep three, he'll fire, good! Logan Anson has two three balls here in this first quarter, 16-12. A big three, and the Panthers get the steal layup up, and it is good! Wiley with the steal in the bucket. And the Panthers come roaring back 16 to 14. Atlantic's lead cut to two. Ryder Burke in the front court. Bounce pass out top to Hutsey. Trojans have the ball. Hutsey, Anderson. Joined by Kyle Strider. Sends it left side to Kyle Ryder Burke. 15 on the shot clock. Down low to Hutsey's hook shot, no. Rasslin rebound, his put back is missed. Tip up by a Pearl, out of bounds, Preston's ball. Panthers had that center all clogged up, Cody. Yeah, three guys right there in the center. We had to, you know, go up for the ball a couple times and uh, no success, and it goes out on one of our guys, so turnover and go in Creston's direction. Kale turn it with it across the timeline. To Kyle Strider between the rings, he'll deliver to well up wing to Barner. Now the baseline. Anson looks for it. He's got two threes. Driving as Kale Turner. Lamp is no good. Rebound Rasmus. And he got a hand on that. And the junior gets the ball back out top to Ryder Burke. 
41 seconds of the game clock, 27 seconds of the shot clock. Lanik up by two. And a whistle, and we've got a turnover. Trojans, in fact, a foul on Atlantic. And that'll be number seven. It was an offensive foul called on Colton Rasmussen, his first. So the Panthers will have the basketball and down by two. Trojans had a six-point lead here in the first quarter. Anson with two three balls to spark this offense for Creston. Kale Turner with it. Pass right side of Parker Varner. Varner playing off the bench. A couple of fancy dribbles, drives the right side, and he uh, got away with the travel there. Anderson with the ball. He'll run to the front court. 15 to go. A layup blocked out of bounds by Cale Turner. He came from behind and stripped the ball as Anderson went up for the layup. And the Trojans have it out of bounds. Ryder Burke will throw it in. 16-14 Trojans. 13 seconds to play in the half. Out to Rasmussen on the right wing. Rasmussen drives, stops, shoots. Good. Colton Rasmussen with three. Four seconds to go. Out top, Turner on the drive. Throws it up at two. It is good. Turner got the roll. And it's an 18-16 score here after one. Atlantic by two on the Seed Pro scoreboard. By your side to maximize yields from the word go. Contact John Becker, Mark Ventag, or Gary Dinkma, and Nick Knudsen for all of your Pioneer Seed needs. We're back right after these at 95.7 FM. Ear, nose, and throat. After years of wondering why I see more runners than other athletes, I figured it out. Well, a sophomore hurdler explained it to me. This is Dr. Fritz Beyer of Body Basics Chiropractic, and he told me since my hips started knocking up, I lost one second from my time. One second in a 55-second race is less than 2%, but he knew it instantly because the stopwatch told him. In other sports, there's not a stopwatch to tell you when the nagging injury takes 2% from you. To make sure you're giving your 100%, call 254-BODY to get your body back to the basics. Cass Health in Atlantic, Iowa is a nationally recognized hospital, and we are proud of the awards and all of our recent accomplishments. But do you know what drives us to be the very best? You. We're passionate about helping our patients heal and feel their very best at any age and any stage of life. Cass Health. Neighbors caring for neighbors. 4-3-4-3-7-9, Outfitters Plus in Atlantic. Welcome back to Crest and Panthers have the ball to start the second quarter. A tight game here, 18-16. Cale Turner angles right on the dribble to back out top to Strider. He'll fire a deep three, well short. Rebound Rasmussen for Atlantic out to Pearl. Back to Kenny Jewell, the point guard. Atlantic with four of the starters in the lineup. Jackson McLaren takes it down low, and he is tripped at a foul called on Creston. Kenny Jewell is back in. Anderson in for Pellet. Carter has, I think, two fouls in that first quarter. Jewell will throw it in for the baseline. Checking in is Hoyt. Jake Hoyt, a 6'3 sophomore. He went for two for the line. Out comes Anson. Logan Anson had those two three-point shots to spark the Panthers. Start of the second quarter, Atlantic by two, 18-16. 7.29 to play. Two fouls on Strider now. Inbounds Rasmussen left baseline. He'll take it inside the block, muscles it up, and it is no... Yeah, it is. <laughs> he got the roll and good. Atlantic by four, 20-16. Rasmussen with five. Strider drives for Creston. Baseline shot by... Ho oh, by Varner. He knocked it down. Parker Varner with a deep baseline three. Panthers within one, 20 to 19. Third three ball by Crest. Atlantic, no three ball shots tonight. Almost a steal by Cale Turner as Jewell brought the ball up the front court. Seven minutes to go in the first half. 20 to 19, Atlantic by one. The officials are conferring here on the near side. It's uh, going to be Atlantic's ball. These guys have their work cut out for them here, Cody. <laughs> They're not going to win from either side, either either fan base. They're doing well. Well, this is a tough, up-tempo, physical game. And it's well under control. Anderson to toss it. He's got to hurry up, and he gets it into Pearl. Pearl high and left, top of the circle. Left wing to Kenick Jewell. The sophomore drives Anderson. Takes it to the rack, layup up, and it is good. Caden Anderson having a good first half off the bench. His four points 
Atlantic up 22 to 19 of the Seed Pro School Board. Cade Anderson attacking the rim, kissing off the glass and in. Kyle Strider for Creston, top of the circle, delivers left wing to Varner. Patrick Varner guarded by Pearl, backs up behind the top of the circle. Kicks it left baseline, Strider driving a McLaren, lobs it up and good. Strider with four, averaging 15 coming in. Lennox lead shaved to one, 22-21. Kate Anderson brings it across the timeline, got it by Parker Varner. Now top to Pearl, and a whistle, and we've got a foul call on Anderson. And it'll be Creston's ball, so an offensive foul. A charge is called. Panthers have it. Strider will throw it into Kale Turner. Parker Varner is in there with Patrick Varner and Jake Hoyt, the sophomore. Strider near side, pass left wing. Patrick Varner goes baseline to Kale Turner, got it by Kenny Jewell. 5.59 to go in the first half. Atlantic up by one. Three point shot from the top is missed by Parker Varner. Rebound Patrick Varner. He's going to knock it out of bounds. Atlantic's ball. Creston's picked up on the defensive end, Cody. Yeah, they're playing tight coverage there. Uh, full full court press, actually, and making it difficult for Atlanta to get it across there. Anderson brings it across the half-court line. Got it by Varner. Back out top to Jewell. Inside of Jax McLaren. Jump stop layup. No good. A travel is going to be called on the floor. Turnover on the Trojans. It'll be Creston's ball. Strider into Kale. Turner Atlantic drops back in that half-court defense. It's a man defense. McLaren is on Parker Strider. Kate Anderson guarding Kyle Strider. Parker Varner with it out of Patrick Varner. Back to Parker from the baseline. He'll fire a three for the lead. No good. Rebound, Kale Turner put back, no good. Another offensive rebound by Varner, no good. Ball tipped to uh, Kale Turner, and the Panthers control the board. Turner in the block, and a whistle. Foul called on Kenny Jewell. His second foul. 5-10 to go in the first half of the Seed Pro School Board, 22-21. Logan Anson will check in for the Panthers. Connor Wiley will also come back in. Patrick Varner comes out. Free throws for Crest. Atlantic now nine fouls in the first half. Kenny Jewell with a pair. And Kale Turner at the line is one for two. And it's not going to be a shooting foul. Connor Wiley is in. Kale Turner. Six guys are on the floor for Crest, and somebody's got to come out. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Coach Schaefer's going to have to. Now, now they bring Wiley back out. So it is a one on one. The confusion was whether it's free throws or not. So Wiley will check in for Kale Turner. But first, Turner steps to the free throw line. He'll have the front end of a one and one. 22-21 Atlantic with a one-point lead, but that lead in jeopardy here with Varner. Kale Turner at the line. Free throw on the way. Good. Turner two for three for the stripe, and we're tied at 22-22. 5-10 to go here in this first half. Second free throw by Kale Turner in the air. Good. Preston takes the lead. And Kale Turner with five points. 23-22 on Turner's two free throws. Atlantic will bring it in. Par Pellet back in the lineup with two fouls into Pearl. Full court pressure put on by Creston. Jay Coit the sophomore on Jaden Pearl. Pearl clears the half court line. Leaves it off for Kate Anderson back to Pearl left side. Pearl whips it out top to Burke. Burke drives in, down low, Pellet, big step, layup, good. Pellet with seven. Lanik back up 24-23, 4.45 to go in the first half. Strider drives, down low, Anson, short, Jay, good. Anson about a five-footer for left baseline, wide open, just lobs it in. And it's back up for Creston, 25-24. Anderson to the front, leaves it off for Ryder Brook at the top of the circle. 
Velvet Rasmussen playing the forward spot. Anderson takes the pass left wing, whips it out top to Rasmussen. He'll send it right baseline to Pearl. Stops, pops the three. God! Jaden Pearl wide open. And it puts Atlantic up 27 to 25. Pearl's third three-pointer of the season. He's three for eight. And now Creston throws it away at the other end. Atlanta gets the ball back. Michael Hutsey comes in. And Colton Rasmussen will go out. So it's Pearl, Ryder Burke, Kate Anderson, Carter Pellet, and Michael Hutsey for Creston. Wiley is in there. Strider, Parker Vonner, Jake Hoyt, and Logan Anson. Inbounds to Ryder Burke for Atlantic. He'll bring it across the half court line and set up the offense. Whips it left side of Pearl. Pearl hands it off to Pellet. Pellet on the left wing. Pellet, baseline Pearl. We've got a whistle. Foul call to the Trojans. Away from the basketball. That's on Hutsey, his second. And that's 10 fouls on Atlantic. Parker Varner comes out. Jake Hoyt comes out. Strider is in there for Creston. Patrick Varner, Logan Anson. Wiley is in, and here's Keel turning with the ball. High and right to Strider. Strider against Anderson, drives inside the block. Caught inside, kick out top to Turner. He'll take it to the rim, layup, good! Gail Turner, seven points, and it's a 27-27 tie. Atlantic with the basketball. Pearl to Ryder Burke, high and right. We're down to 325 to play in the first half. Anderson, top of the circle for the Trojans, works off the screen from Hudson, baseline to Pearl. Pearl on the move, takes in the paint, kicks the left wing. Anderson takes it to the rack, layup good. How about Anderson, boy? Six points off the bench, and he's taking it to the rim for the Trojans. Atlantic up by two, 29-27. Panthers back to the front. Out to Anson for three. God, my goodness, Anson with three threes. And the Panthers retake the lead 30-29. to Now we've got a whistle. And a foul is going to be called on Atlantic. Yeah, Ryder Burke there with the push. Um, they're going to give the ball back to Creston, it looks like. Wow, this could be a five-point play, even a six-point play. Oh, they're going to give him two shots. Yeah, they're going to give him some baskets. We always station identification. You're listening to High School Basketball on KSWI Atlantic. KS95.7 is KSWI Atlantic, a proud part of Meredith Communications. KS95.7. Well, the Panthers get the free throw. Uh, Connor Wiley. Puts it in, he has three points, and now Creston up 31 to 29. Lennox really held that lead in the first half. Second free throw by Wiley is missed, and Pellet snags the rebound for Atlantic. Here come the Trojans. Connor Pellet will do it across the timeline, whips it out to Pearl. Pearl high and right, hands it off to Anderson. Trojans work the top of the circle, 2.44 to go. Pellet baseline J, no good. Rebound Wiley. Here comes Creston to the front court. Wiley, out top to Keel Turner, step back, three is up, and it is no good, and out of bounds, Trojans get the ball back. Atlantic will have it, Carter Pella will throw it in for the baseline. Again, that Panther, they put on that full court pressure. They don't contest the entry pass so much, Pellet will be uncontested throwing it in, backdoor pass to Pearl. Pearl brings it across the half court line for Atlantic. Panthers up by two. Pearl's pass batted him away. Well, this defense for Creston has really been tough on the Trojans. Carter Pellet will throw it from the uh, sideline. Panthers up by two, 31-29. Inbounds to Pearl. Pearl looks for Hutsey. Pearl drives down the right side. Loves a little to Pellet. Layup up, and it is good. Pellet gets the two for Atlantic. Pellet with nine points. And that ties it up at 31, 31, 209 to go in the first half. Kale Turner brings it across for Creston. High and right to Strider. Strider with a couple of dribbles, stops, leaves it left wing. Wiley, Anson. Logan Anson with three threes here in the first half. Skip pass to Turner. Turner takes it to the rack. Put up by Hutsey. Back to Logan Anson for three. Missed the shot. Pellet snags the rebound for Atlantic. Pass ahead to Hutsey. Down the lane. Layup up and God! Hutsey with a great throw from Pellet and gets a two for Atlantic. Atlantic takes a 33-31 lead. They've scored four straight now. Barner has it baseline. 
Turn shoots, missed, and a travel call on Barner. So Atlantic will have the ball. Ryder will check in along with Jackson McLaren and Hutsey. Will come out. Well, maybe not. Yeah, he's coming out. Pellet will get a break as well. Jaden Pearl will throw it in for the Trojans. 33-31 Atlantic by a pair with 1.30 to go in the second quarter. Pearl, Burke, Anderson, Rasmussen, Jackson, McLaren. Pass in. Rasmussen back out top to Pearl. Pearl guarded by Anselm. We get across the timeline. Works down the left wing. Baseline, Jackson, McLaren. Back to Pearl, left side. Looks for a cutter. Atlantic is spreading it out here. Rasmussen high and left. 19 of the shot clock, 112 of the game clock. Right of Burke out to Jax McLaren, top of the circle. Over to Anderson. Beyond the left wing. Vick out top to Pearl. Eight seconds of the clock. Down to McLaren. Layup up and good. Great look by Anderson. And McLaren with the finish for the Trojans. He has seven. Atlantic back up by four. 35 31 of the Seed Pro scoreboard. Weston with the front court. Strider has been held down here in the game. Just four points. Looks for a cutter. Gets it down inside to Wiley. Runs right over Jackson McLaren. McLaren called for the block. Mm. So that's, uh, what, about 11 fouls, Cody, on Atlantic? 12 fouls of the Trojans. Yeah, 12 fouls. Uh, you know, Atlantic's really doing a good job once they get down the court, though, um, having a guy inside there, and they're wide open underneath the basket for an easy layup. So you're not seeing many threes like we saw against Clarinda, but you're seeing that inside game work. Free throw by Connor Wiley is missed. You know, Coach Hall wants to see the Trojans hit more threes, but Anderson has one. Here in the ball game, or, free throw, or Pearl rather, free throw missed. Trojans rebound. Out to Rasmussen. 34 seconds left on the shot clock. Trojans have the ball with 28 seconds to go. 23 in the shot clock, I should say. Down to 19. Rasmussen with it, drives in, kicks out top to Anderson. He'll finish with a layup. It is good. What a first half for Caden Anderson. Eight points. Atlantic up 37 to 31. This was tied at 31 31. Atlantic on a 6 0 run. Strider deep, three, missed the shot. Three seconds, two. McLaren layup, it is good. Atlantic beats the buzzer. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh, that was perfect timing, nice long pass. McLaren was wide open there for an easy layup, just as time expired. How about that pass to him, Cody? <laughs> wow. Trojans up 39 to 31 at halftime. Our guest will be Atlantic head girls coach Dan Vargason. We'll have that uh, coming up right after this uh, from our halftime sponsor, Olsen Fuel and Olsen BP, your home for Godfather's Pizza. It is, it is the holiday season so it is tis the time for a great deal from Olson's BP in Atlantic your December special get three dollars off a large specialty Godfather's pizza and it tis the season to be jolly so what better way to make yourself jolly than to save some extra money and have a great go to dinner this holiday season your December special at Olson's BP get three dollars off any large specialty Godfather's pizza from Olson's BP the keep you going store Brought to be Olson's BP and Olson Fuel, your home for Godfather's Pizza. Atlantic up 39 to 31 here so far, and um, 18 to 16. Atlantic outscored the Panthers in the first quarter, 21 to 15 in that to second quarter of play. And uh, we are joined by Atlantic head girls basketball coach Dan Vargason. Uh, three straight now, coach. Uh, beat Clarinda on Tuesday. You beat ACGC on Friday, and you come back and beat the Clinton uh, Cardinal or the Creston Panthers on Friday night to talk about this week. Yeah, you know, it was a busy week. Um, Tuesday night, we uh, we played Clarinda, and we knew they were going to be much improved. Um, you know, but our girls got locked in. There was a lot of frustration, like we talked about the other night in the locker room after losing to, to Glenwood and ADM, but it wasn't a bad frustration. It was that, um, you know, that passionate. We want to win the game. You know, we don't want to go in and, and play tough with good teams. We want to start beating those teams. And then we go back to back Thursday, Friday with ACGC, and uh, we come out and, and all the, that game in the Creston. We come out in all three games, and defensively, we just we, we were uh, imposing our will, to be fair. Uh, we just put it on, and uh, defense turned into offense for us. I really thought that 
the Clarinda game. You led 30 to six at the halftime break. Uh, kind of loosened up in the second half with, uh, you know, you played played everybody, but uh, ACGC holding the 13, uh, and then tonight uh, 33 points uh, for the uh, uh, Creston Panthers here in a 63-33 dominating win. What is it about this defense? You know they're active. They're they're working together. We we've been preaching that um, this defense is good for us. The way that we play, our personnel, um, the length, the athleticism. But the the key to any good defense, especially a zone where there's rotations, is all five girls have to be on the same page. You can't have one girl not doing her job. Um, and we've been running this defense for a couple of years now, so so we feel like we should be pretty good at the system. Um, but all five girls are doing their job. We're able to go to the bench and get girls in doing their job. We twisted things up a little bit tonight uh, with Pop in the middle and gave them a little bit different look than changed up in the, the third and fourth quarter and it blew the game open so um, execution on defense and buying into that end of the floor you know we've been we want to play offense but not so much on defense and now it's kind of flipping that our defense is turning into that offense and mm -hmm. that's huge for us no down here tonight uh, Peyton Harder your leading score averaging 17 didn't get her points she had some foul troubles but then you've got a supporting cast uh, with uh, three others in double the figures here tonight uh, talk about Jada Jensen 13 points uh, Maddie Richter found her range again with 16 to lead the team. And Aubrey Guy, we'll start with those three. Yeah, absolutely. You know, first of all, people are like, well, Peyton was held to eight. And I'm like, yeah, by the guys in stripes. Um, <laughs> you know, nobody else took her out of the game but but them guys. And uh, it was ticky-tack. So, you know, the, that's the thing about a good team. If your leading score goes out and you still have your highest scoring output of the season, I'm not starting to say something. But, uh, you know, Maddie Richter, first 16 points. She hits four threes. We made seven from the three-point line tonight. We've been struggling from behind the arc. And we knew we have to get going. We can't be one dimensional and just go inside or just be outside. We got to go inside, outside, offense, deep, ever, all that good stuff. So she did great, but not only that, but she uh, she blew by a girl and got into the paint, went around, yeah. pop, and scored. That kind of confidence is what we need. And that Aubrey Geyer, man, she's coming on strong these last few games. Uh, you know, we had that conversation in the locker room about needing more scores, and she's taking that to heart. Uh, I think she had 10 again tonight. Second half. Yeah, and, and, and again, it's just she's getting aggressive. She's rebounding. She's in the right place. She knows what to do, and now she's starting to execute. Um, and, and that's a big reason this week that we've been able to put up points as she's been a big part of that uh, and then obviously Jada we know she's stable but the biggest thing tonight was she was a lot better from the free throw line she was four of six and she's been struggling I think she was coming into this game under 30 percent just a little bit flustered and we changed some things up and just tried to get her right mentally she's a great player um, so we just got her going there and then uh, you know Maddie Huddleston tonight hit some big shots for us as well um, but the biggest thing is even if shots aren't falling for certain players we're still defending you know, and, and that's good. And then we get some younger players, and we're finally starting to be able to get in some of those kids and, and develop players not only for now but for later. But, uh, you know, Zoe Kirkhoff, I think, had six tonight. Yeah. Uh, and she's starting to get more and more yeah. confident. And Lila Wiederstein's starting to understand the defense. And she's very physical. And, uh, you know, McKenna Schrader, she's not afraid to shoot. You know, we put her in until her shoot that corner shot. She did and just about hit it. So um, I, I've been very pleased with that. And, you know, Kira Olsen tonight wasn't her, uh, you know, strongest statistical night, but she still had some good plays. She, she made pop work in the post. She did a great job in the second half of fronting her in the post and making her have to work. Well, I think the credit to uh, Feather Her Cap was she scored the first buck of the game and it got you going. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, that's the thing, though. She, but th this is what I love about Kira. Statistics don't matter to her. She wants to win basketball games. She wants to be part of a team. Um, and that's the reason that we're where we're at. Instead of her trying to go out and be somebody who wants to be all the minutes and all the points and all that, she just goes out and busts her butt, plays hard. And, and that's the kind of kid you need in your program. They're just as important as the kid that scores 16 or 17. If you don't have five players that are bought in, it doesn't matter what you get. Coach, uh, in summary, what were you most impressed with with your win tonight, 63-33 over Creston? Well, we were tired. You could tell in the first half yeah. we were just a little bit tired. Um, how to find that energy when you're in that situation? You're going to be tired in basketball. It's part of the sports. You know, and, and Gino Ariema at UConn, uh, you know, we, we played a little clip for them. It was about 30 seconds this last week, and, you know, he basically talks about good players get tired, great players kick their butt when they're tired. So uh, we talked about when you're tired, you have to be less tired than everybody else, or at least show it, and our girls did that tonight. Hey, before I let you go now, we got a thing coming up here a week from uh, today on a Saturday afternoon. So Saturday afternoon, and let's talk about Nottoway Valley in Atlanta. You play a camper on uh, Tuesday. We'll have more on that with you, Coach, in early next week. But what's going to go on with Nottoway Valley here? Yeah, so uh, Coach Eisbach and I, we've been going back and forth <laughs> with the ugly sweaters and stuff like that the last couple of years, and he showed us up last year with a whole jumpsuit. So we thought we'd take it to the next <laughs> level, and, and we decided that uh, with our coaching staffs getting along so well and with the connection with Jeremy Blake that uh, we would take this fun little deal and turn it into a, a little bit of a thing to help the community out. So the Nottoway Valley coaches um, and the Atlanta coaches, 
boys and girls are going to dress up in uh, Christmas stuff, sweaters, jumpsuits, whatever. And then what we're doing is uh, we, we found a sponsor. Fairway's going to help us out. Greenfield and Atlantic both donated. Um, so we got some money already in the in the pot for it. And then what we're going to do is uh, collect donations at the game. So anybody that comes to the game, if they want to bring a couple bucks, throw it in. And then what we're going to do is open it up on social media. We'll spread a link out for a couple days, opening it up on Saturday. Um, and then the communities can vote. And whichever coaching staff gets more votes, the money is going to be donated back to that community. Um, and I know uh, over there they chose UMC. Um, I think it's a food food thing. I can't remember exactly what it's off the top of my head. Um, but they have. I think it's a Methodist Church yes. the food bank. Yes, yes it yes. is. And then we chose the Family Dreams Christmas that we've been working with. You know, that's something that yeah. uh, is very valuable to our program and our community. So we decided that um, whoever gets that, that money will go straight to that organization. Uh, you know, none of it comes back to the programs. We want to help the communities. Um, it, it's big to both of us to make sure that our communities are getting taken care of. So this is just a way for Atlantic and Attaway Valley to come together, take something that's fun, and, and make it also <laughs> about the community. So that's that's awesome to, to see that. So if people could come out and, uh, you know, chip in a couple bucks, it'd be really big. I want to go back to Tuesday. You've won three straight now. You're five and two, or excuse me, four and two in the season. What about Kemper? Yeah, Kemper, uh, you know, I haven't looked a lot at them. They got beat by Denison, but they've been in some close games with St. Albert and some other good teams, Harlan. Uh, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to execute. We know they've got Kate Mayhall. She's a great point guard. Uh, Franny Glenn last year scored a lot of points. I know they got some other players as well. Um, but, you know, we've been taking it game by game so much that yeah, yeah. we haven't really looked too much. But they're one of those in-between teams that some nights they're hot, some nights they're kind of cold. Last year they beat us by about eight at home, and then we beat them by 30 at third place. So we just got to make sure we go into that with the right mindset and keep building on what we've done. Defense, was that the priority coming in here? I mean, that seems to be so much improved this year, Coach. Yeah, that's been the focus. We've been decent offensively. I think the last couple of years we've been averaging almost 55 points a game. We're only winning nine games. Um, you know, the moral of the story, you got to defend. And now we're starting to defend and turning it into offense. So, you know, we're not scoring as much as we did, but we're limiting teams a lot more. Um, and, and by doing that, you're winning games. You know, defense, people talk about wins championships. You got to have, an, you have to, you, you do got to play defense. You got to play offense too. Our balance was way off these last couple of years. We were defending not as quiet, uh, quite as high as we wanted to. Now that we have that going with our offense, now we're becoming a little bit more of a dangerous mm -hmm. team. Keep up the great work, coach. Thank you so much. We'll see you Tuesday against Camper. Sounds good. Thank you, Tom. Atlantic head coach Dan Vargas and the Trojans are four and two in the season. They've won three straight all this week as they beat uh, Clarina on Tuesday, ACGC on Thursday, and uh, what they win over uh, Creston. We'll be back with the second half. In fact, we're getting close. We're back right after this from our halftime sponsor, Olsen BP and Olsen Fuel. It is it tis the holiday season, so it is tis the time for a great deal from Olsen's BP in Atlantic. Your December special, get $3 off a large specialty Godfather's pizza. And it tis the season to be jolly, so what better way to make yourself jolly than to save some extra money and have a great go-to dinner this holiday season. Your December special at Olsen's BP. Get $3 off any large specialty Godfather's pizza from Olsen's BP, the Keep You Going store. As we go to the second half, Tom Robinson, Cody Weaver with you. Big thanks to Dan Vargas. And Crescent has the ball. Atlantic up 39 to 31. Panthers start the second half with a Kyle Strider top of the circle. Looks at the deep three. He's going to tuck and run. He's going to be cut off by McClare. Atlantic's did a great job on Strider. Varner left wing, back out top. Strider for three, and he knocked it down. Well, Strider got loose, and he gets the three ball for the Panthers. And it's 39-34. It's going to be that kind of a game. Trojans have the ball. Down low to uh, McLaren. Layup is no good. McLaren battles for it. Ball is loose, and he's going to be called for a foul. <laughs> he is, he's physical there. Yeah, he, Jackson's really going after it. And so Atlantic with their first foul within 60 seconds out of the gate. And Kyle Strider will throw it in. Early third quarter. Your score brought to the seed pros. They're by your side to maximize yields from the word go. Contact John Becker, Mark Ventag, or Gary Dinkla. And Nick Knudsen, Kyle Strider with a request in the front court. Looks for a cutter, finds Kale Turner right baseline, pulls up and releases, no good. Rebound to Jax McLaren, leaves it off for Kinnick Jewell. Here comes the Trojans. Jewell fires a rash, the baseline drive layup, good! 41-34 Atlantic. Rasmussen with seven. 
Kale Turner brings it across for Creston left to right. On the move, down the paint, high and right to Strider. Left open, now he's going to bring it inside the block. Scoop shot is no good, a foul called. I believe on McLaren. And that's two quick fouls here in the uh, second half. And Anderson will pop off the bench. Cade had a good first half offensively with eight points. In fact, he guarded Kyle Strider. Strider was held at just four uh, first half points. Strider has seven. Free throw was no good by the guard. Strider is senior. McLaren comes out, he has three fouls. Preston. Trailing Atlantic, 41 to 34, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. They've shot 12 free throws. Second one is good. 41 35, and Strider with eight points. Atlantic brings it across the timeline. And Kenny Jewell runs it down. Yeah, it'd be a foul on yeah. Creston there on the other side on uh, Caden, against Caden Anderson anyway, not on him, but be throwing it in from the side there. Yeah, I'm looking at my school book trying to get Strider's numbers right. We got him at nine points. Hey, 41-35, here comes Kenny Jewell out top to Colton Rasmussen. Right side, Anderson. He'll dump a load of pellet. He'll go right to back door. Lamp, good! Carter Pellet. He has nine point, 11 yeah. points. Yeah, between him and Jackson McLaren there underneath the, the basket there in the paint, that's, they've been open pretty much all night. Strider to the other end, puts it off the glass and in. Well, Kyle Strider was held to four in the first half, and he's got six already in the second half. Another another foul on Creston there coming down the field. So, so Creston with two, Atlantic with two fouls. 5.54 to go here in this third quarter. 43-37, Atlantic with the lead of the Steve Pro school board, and Anderson will throw it in the backcourt. Finds Pearl in the front court. Pearl guarded by Kyle Strider. Anderson, Kenny Jewell. Pearl drives right side, fall away jumper, no good. Pellet rebound, his put back is good! He drives the foul! <laughs> Pellet with 13, and probably heading to the double-double. He had 21 rebounds last Tuesday night. Try to make that a three-point shot here. So really, you know, strong by Pellet, up straight there, turns, gets the bucket and the foul. So he gets the end one, and Jake Hoyt, the sophomore, checks in. Logan Anson comes out, landing up 45 to 37. Free throw by Carter. Pellet is on the way, and good. Pellet having another solid night for Atlantic. Two for three for the line. He has 14 points. Panthers have it the front court. Kale Turner. Baseline. Varner wide open. Launch a three. No good. Pellet tips it to Varner. Layup good. Varner got it. He has four points. Atlantic up 46 39, 5 20 to play. Third quarter. Pearl across the timeline for Atlantic. On the dribble to the circle. He's picked up at the top by Willie now in the game. Back to Pellet high and right. Anderson takes it left wing. He'll take it to the uh, rack. Layup is no good. Rebound Parker. Patrick Varner. Brother Patrick and Parker both play. Here comes Patrick driving in. We've got a foul called on Pearl. Little bump on Patrick Varner. 4.57 to go in the third quarter. 28 in the shot clock for Creston. Atlantic up 46-39 of the seed pro school board. Turner to throw it in to Varner. Got it by Pearl, baseline. Keel Turner on the dribble to the elbow. He'll push one up off the glass, no good. And the ball tipped out of bounds by the Trojans, and the Panthers have it. Yeah, and you see Carter Pellet right there in the middle, you know, um, going after that ball and just knocked it out of bounds. So in the position he needs to be, he just can't uh, quite bring it down. Well, it seems like Atlantic is losing those 50-50 balls, Cody. <laughs> Inbounds to Willie. The ball is tipped out by the Trojans. A lot of those 50-50 balls have just either, either t been tipped out of bounds or in the hands of uh, Creston. Kale Turner will throw it in again for the baseline. Turn it way out top to Varner. Got it by Pearl, top of the circle. 46-39 Atlantic. 4.40 to go, third quarter. Baseline, Hoyt. The sophomore puts up the three. Missed the shot. Rebound, Strider. Put back is good. Strider just out hustled the Trojans. Yeah, he was on the move right away as soon as that shot was taken, and it was in the right spot there when it missed. 
That bucket shaves the Trojan lead to five. Pearl with it. Throws it away. Steal by Turner. Layup good. 46-43, and Coach Hall has seen it up. 4.14 left. We're back in 30 seconds on 95.7 FM and live video streamed on WesternIowaToday.com. If you need parts or tools for your shop, you'll find it at CarQuest and Atlantic Ag and Auto, your only locally owned parts resource in Atlantic. We have shop air compressors, tools, air tanks, and welding supplies. We can make hydraulic hoses in-house in minutes. As the cold weather takes its toll on engine batteries, we have in stock batteries for big cats to cub cadets. We can get you started. Before or after hours, Atlantic Ag and Auto is your full-service CarQuest parts store. We're on the corner of 7th Street, across from the Lindemann Tractor, and here to serve you, the customer. Uh, Trojans leading 46-43, but the Panthers making a big run at it. 4.14 to go. Full-court pressure put on by Creston. The ball gets into Anderson for Atlantic. Hayden's played a nice ball game. He has eight points all in the first half. And Keel Turner with a foul called. A reaching foul. That's going to be five or four on Creston. Three on Atlantic. 4.06 to go third quarter. Anderson Pearl, Jewel Rasmussen, and Pellet in. Jackson McLaren on the bench with three fouls. Anderson gets it into Kenick. Jewel he'll bring it across the half-court line for the Trojans. Jewel guarded by Keel Turner. Whips the ball over to Pearl. Pearl with it down the left side. Pulls up with the uh, elbow. Into Pellet in traffic. And a foul called on Creston. Looks like that might be Strider, possibly. 3.54 to go. Third quarter. The foul is going to be on Jake Hoyt, I believe, his first. Atlantic up by three, 46-43. Kenny Jewell comes out. Burke, Rasmussen, Pearl, Anderson, and Pellet in the game for the Trojans. New player for the Panthers in as well. That's uh, Noah Felix. Inbounds to Anderson. He'll take it into the rim. A shot off the glass. No good. A crowd for the rebound. And uh, the scrum. And Anderson, Anderson, Anderson right coming out with it. it there, yeah. <laughs> Pearl drives in. Layup, no. Ball tipped to Strider. Here comes Preston. Strider brings it across the half-court line. Down by three. Anderson, Strider. Strider takes it in. Layup is up and no good. Rebound Anderson for Atlantic. And out to Pellet. 3.26 to go third quarter. Anderson, Ryder Berg high and left. Back door to Pellet. Dangerous pass secured. Shot blocked by Hoyt. Yeah, again, you see Pellet open underneath there. Just a little bit overthrown. Um, luckily, it was off Creston there, and it would be Atlantic's ball again. 3.60 to go in the third quarter. 46-43, Atlantic by three. Burke will throw over the baseline. Gets it into Anderson. He'll muscle one up. Block. Pella gets the put back. No. Pella back again. Can't get it to go. And the ball out of bounds. Boy, boy. In comes Parker Varner. And Kyle Strider comes out for Creston. 3.09 to go. Third quarter. Atlantic up by three. 46-43. The ball in the hands of Keel Turner. He'll dribble it across the half-court line, picked up by Pearl. Turner, top of the circle, finds a seam, slithers in. And a whistle, a foul called on Atlantic. Jane Pearl called with a foul. And that's going to be number five of the Trojans. Coming in is Hutsey, Jewel, Pellet, and Pearl come out. 3-0-1 to go in the third quarter. Atlantic by three, Creston's ball. Kale Turner will throw it in for the baseline. Right side of the basket out top to Jake Hoyt. Now the game is Felix. Driving Hoyt. Pulls up at the post. Back out top to Varner. Picked up by Burke. Varner behind the arc. Back to Hoyt. Baseline. Guarded by Hutsey. Spins inside. Layup up and it is good. Nice move by Hoyt. And Hoyt with three points. 46-45, Atlantic's lead cut to one. Hutsey high and left. Right side of Jewel. Jewel on the drive. Kick back out top to Anderson. Anderson takes it to the rim. Layup no good. Rebound Panthers. Hoyt with it for the Trojans. Can't buy a bucket here as of late. Inside of Keel. Turn it back out to Felix. Baseline drive. Parker. Varner good. Panthers up. 47 to 46. 
Here comes Burke for Atlanta. His layup is good. Burke's first two. Atlantic back up 48 47 and 155 to play third quarter. Turner with it at the right side. 20 at the shot clock. 149 of the game clock. Atlantic by one. Driving Turner. Right side pass to Patrick Varner, guarded by Burke. Varner, high top. Kale Turner on a reach and foul on Jewel. That'd be three on Jewel, I believe. Yeah, he just whipped his arm in there. You're going to get called for that every time. He was moving his feet defensively. Paladin Hutsey out. Go did you mention what the uh, three on the. Uh, yeah, that's three on Jewel. Jewel. They're going to keep him in. 136 to go. Third quarter entry pass to the baseline by Keel Turnaby out top to uh, Parker Varner. The winner Patrick Varner left wing. Driving in. Big step. Layup good. Preston back on top. Patrick Varner with six points in the third quarter. 49 48. Preston. Burke right side Anderson to Rasmussen high and right. Rasmussen pulls up inside the arc. Back to Anderson. Rasmussen fires from the top, off the glass, no good. Rebound, Varner, and a foul call on Atlantic again. That's seven of the Trojans. Ryder Burke, the guilty party. Yeah, push again, looks like. 2-1 Burke. Yep. <clears throat> Gale Turner wearing the ball up the floor. 108 to go in the third quarter. And Crested up 49-48. to Atlantic led at halftime, 39 to 31. Parker Varner with it high and right, skip pass to Logan Anson, down low to Felix. Wide open there on the inside. There's Varner wide open at the top, fires no good. Rebound Anderson for Atlantic. Anderson brings it across the timeline and poked away by Felix. Panthers have it back, here comes Patrick Varner. Driving in, Anson wide open on the baseline. He's screaming for the ball. Out to Turner, top of the circle, got by Kenny Jewell. Turner to the rack, cut off by Jewell. Back to Varner, he'll take it to the rim, followed by Jay from four, good. Boy, Patrick Varner just taking the team on his shoulders here. Panthers up 51-48, pass the pellet, layup, good! That was Jewell assist, Cody. Yeah, Jewell hustled down the deal there, saw a pellet, uh, you know, underneath there, kind of wide open and passed him the ball, and a nice assist there by Jewell. Three seconds to go in the third quarter. Atlantic has it, one, and Rasmus it from the half court, does not get it away. And we are through three quarters, and we've got a barn burner. 51-50, Panthers with the lead. We're back in a minute. A 95.7 FM, a live video streamed on WesternIowaToday.com. This year... John here from Atlantic IV. I just wanted to thank Atlantic and the surrounding communities for allowing us to serve your meat, grocery, floral, and pharmacy needs. You can be sure that we are working hard looking for deals to save you money on your groceries and at the pump. Thanks again from all of us here at your Atlantic IV for allowing us to serve your meat, grocery, floral, and pharmacy needs. And we'll see you soon. Live video streaming on westerniowatoday.com is courtesy of Nishnanet, offering always fast internet with no gimmick pricing to select rural areas of Cass and Audubon counties. Nishnanet is a local company with local technicians and offers unlimited data on most of their internet plans. Learn more about Nishnanet and their services and products by going to their website at nishnanet.com. Nishnanet.com, technically awesome. Your meat, grocery, floral, and pharmacy needs, and we'll see you soon. Welcome back to Creston Atlantic and the Panthers, and a good one here, 51 to 50. Trojans trail by one. They led by the score of 39 to 31 at the halftime break. Panthers outscored Atlantic 20 to 11 in that third quarter. So here comes Kenny Jewell in the front court. Trojans had the ball to start the final eight. Down by a point of the Seed Pro scoreboard. Noah Felix guarding Anderson back out top to Kenick Jewell. Jewell back out top of the circle. Jacks McLaren back in there working with some foul trouble. Anderson at the top between the circles. Right side to Pellet. Pellet baseline drive. Double team back out to Anderson. He'll take it inside now. Pellet down low to the rack. Layup good. Hunter Pellet have another great night. <clears throat> And Pellet with 18 points. Atlantic back up 52 to 51. Back and forth we go. 
I've seen a lot of two point shots, you know, by Atlantic tonight where, you know, it's been open in the middle there, not a lot of three point shots. Strider drives in and lobs one up and in. Now Panthers back up 53 52. And I think, Cody, you mentioned that. It, Coach Hall would like to see more threes. You know? <laughs> I would too. Yeah. <laughs> Airs to the top, right side of Carter Pellet. Inside of McLaren, his layup is up and no good, but he draws the foul on Logan Anson. But you got to get the ball inside as well. That's where you Correct. draw the foul. Yep. That's the high percentage shot, but it's just something about a long range three that just boosts the offense, huh? Yeah, and shuts the defense down a little bit and mm. kind of kills the momentum, but, uh, you know, helps the. Offensive team there. <laughs> McLaren's free throw is no good. Jax McLaren had nine points in the first half, but has had to deal with some foul issues. He's had to sit a lot of the second half, and they really miss him. Second free throw by Jackson McLaren is up and good. Aaron with one for two. He's two for four off the line tonight. We're tied at 50, 53, 53 on that McLaren's free throw. Just under seven to play in the game. Strider brings it across the half court line for Creston. Back out top to Parker Varner, right baseline. Willie back in to Varner, top of the circle for three, and he knocked it down. Parker he, Varner. He's been hot tonight. Off the bench, Parker Varner with another deep three. Atlantic with the ball down by three, 56-53. McLaren to Pallet high and right. Pellet traveled with it. He had the ball on the right wing and took one too many steps. And it goes over to Creston. Parker Varner will throw it in. Varner off the bench with two three balls. Just a sophomore. He had no three-point shots before tonight. Here's Strider for three at the top. Got it! Oh, my! Strider hits the triple, 59-53, Creston. Yeah, momentum really on Creston's side right now, and we need to uh, get some scores here and shut that down a little bit. McLaren with a screen for Jewel. Back out top to Rasmussen. He's been shut down here in the ball game. Anderson, baseline pellet. He'll fire up the three. No good. McLaren rebound for Atlantic. Oh, he ran right over. And what's this going to be called? Strider was on the defensive end. They're going to call. Well, I haven't seen the call yet. There was contact. Evidently just a ball out of bounds, Cody. <laughs> <laughs> Bodies flying there. We'll take a timeout. We're back in a minute. 95.7 FM. It's Creston 59. Atlantic uh, 53. We're back right after this. Hey, Creon, what do you like most about track? Competing and the strategy with each race. That's just like how Dad and the Seed Pros place different products on different farms. So true. Just like every race brings a different challenge, every field has its own challenges. The Seed Pros partner with each operation to ensure the right product is placed on the right acre. Unmatched year-round service with the expertise to help you win on every acre. The Seed Pros, with you from the word go. The Seed Pros, Mark Van Tegger, Gary Dinklet, Nick Knudsen, and John Becker. Gas prices got you down? Need a ride to work or the grocery store? There's public transportation for everyone in Southwest Iowa. Swita offers taxi service in Atlantic, Glenwood, Harlan, Missouri Valley, Red Oak, and Shenandoah. $2.50 each way or $2 for seniors 60 years and older. Just call 1-800-842-8065 or visit swita.com to schedule your ride. Welcome back, and Pellet takes the entry pass and puts it up and in uh, for the Trojans. Good time out there. And Carter Pellet gets the bucket. Driving Strider, shot, no, rebound Carter Pellet. 59-55, Creston. Here comes Kinnick Jewell. High and right to Anderson. He'll take it to the rim. Layup, good! Anderson's having himself a night. And just like that, the Trojans come out in a full run after timeout. And they close the gap to 59-57. Creston with the basketball. Parker Varner high and right to Willie. Willie now baseline to Parker Varner, guarded by Jackson McLaren. 
McLaren in his grill. Now Varner takes it down low. Hook shot no good. And Rasmussen with a rebound. Trojans can tie it up here as Rasmussen takes it inside. Shot up and it's no good. Pellet battles for the rebound and we got a jump ball. I think that should be Atlantic's ball this time. Nice. It looks like it's going to head Creston's direction now. Yeah, Creston's going to get the ball and uh, they'll have it out of bounds along that right side of the bucket. Atlantic drops out on half court defense with Kate Anderson, Jackson McLaren, Colton Rasmussen, Kenny Jewell, and Carter Pellet. Cale Turner, Strider's in there, Patrick Varner, Logan Anson, and Wiley. 59 57 to Creston, 4.40 to go in the game. Looks like we've got another timeout called. Jane Pearl will come in. It's going to be a quick one, a 30 second timeout. We'll be back in a minute on 95.7. FM. Get a little extra dough this holiday season at Community First Credit Union. If you're one of the many who need a little extra help this time of year, you're going to love our holiday loan special. We're offering a rate lower than most credit cards, no collateral requirements, and an easy online or in-branch application. This loan is excellent for holiday shopping, consolidating your debt, and more. To apply, stop by your local C-First branch or apply online at c1stcu.com today. Some restrictions apply. Loans are subject to Approval, equal housing opportunity. Welcome back to Creston. Timeout called by Coach Schaefer, about a 30 second timeout. And Panthers up 59 to 57. Atlantic on the defensive end. Jax McLaren putting pressure on Wiley, putting the ball in for the half court line. He'll place it in the hands of Cale Turner. 435 to play. Panthers with the basketball. Varner, free throw line. Jay up. No rebound. Rasmussen. Varner in the second half has been awesome with eight points. Yeah, Jaden Pearl there actually with the rebound. Pellet, Pellet turnaround jumper. There. Good. What a feed to Pellet. And he got the pass. Good assist. Yeah, again, inside on the paint there. Open. Able to grab that ball, turn and face, and get the two. 22 for Carter Pellet. Crested with it. Here's Tanner. Dale Turner turning around, jumper no good, Pellet rebound. Oh, We're tied at 59 good. on Pellet's layup. Dipping under four to play. Knotted up 59-59, Pearl to McLaren, and we got a foul call on Strider. That'll put Carter Pellet on the free throw line to shoot. That's Pellet three, with 22. On, three yeah. on Strider, so. Carter Pellet with 22 points, 10 field goals. He's through two for three from the line. We don't can't keep track of rebounds because there's so many, but he had 21 on Tuesday night. Free throw by Pellet off the glass, no good. Rebound, Varner. There come the Panthers to the front court. Big deep three left side, missed rebound, Carter Pellet. Yeah, Atlantic's done a nice job coming back into this. They were down by six. Just kind of worked their way back slowly here, two at a time, and are back in the game, tied up here with possession, 3.33 to go. They've kind of got some momentum here. Atlantic has the front court. Pearl will drive, loops it low to Pellet, layup, good! 61-59, Atlantic takes the lead. You got Pellet right there open, an easy layup, easy toss in there for two. 61-59 on the seed, pro scoreboard, 3.13 to play. Out top, Cale Turner drives in, kicks right, Parker Vaughn out of Hoyt. Hoyt back to Cale Turner, 20 on the shot clock, now 19. Turner against Pellet, takes it to the rack, Pellet foul. Got a knee on him, that's seven on Atlantic. Seven on Creston, 3.01 to play. So Cale Turner will step to the free throw line. Turner is three for four from the line. Nine points for the Panthers. Lennox by two, 61-59. Well, Turner eyes the rim and he is, spins it up and it is good. Turner four for five from the line. He's was only a 45% free throw shooter coming in. He was five for 11 in the first couple of games. He pulls his squad within one. 3-0-1 to play. Turner's second free throw for the tie. Good. Now we're knotted up again at 61-61, and timeout is called. We'll take it with them. 3-0-1 left. 
This thing all tied up at the 61. We're back uh, right after this on 95.7 FM. The Super Bowl in Atlantic is a staple of Cass County get-togethers. From family reunions, birthday parties, night out with friends, and a fun date night, the Super Bowl has always been here. With glow bowling on Fridays and Saturdays, bumpers and ramps for kids, anyone can have a blast at the Super Bowl. Get the ball rolling on your next night out and get together. Call Dan at 243-4656 to book the Super Bowl in Atlantic. Welcome back to Creston and timeout called by Bryce Anderson or Bryce uh, Schaefer. It's a 60 second to timeout. 61 61, Cody. Atlantic had the momentum and Creston gets it back. And how are we going to finish here? <laughs> We're going to come down to the end here. You know, Creston had a six point advantage. Atlantic came back into it. Uh, Creston came back now. Atlantic was up two there. Creston came back and, and tied it up with those free throws. Um, Atlantic's possession here. So just continue to score and, and do the best you can defensively and wait here till the end of the game. Well, Trojans have the ball. Rasp will sit in the backcourt. They'll pass over to Ryder Burke. Trojans, Panthers tie. Pearl left baseline. Drives in, out top to Burke, right side Anderson. He'll take it inside the paint. Layup is no good. A foul called on Creston. And that'll be Anderson shooting for the free throw line. Looks like that might be on Strider, possibly. It is, Cody. That's four on him uh, with 2.45 to go here in the game. So it'll be Kate Anderson at the free throw line. Atlantic and Creston tied at 61-61 on the Seed Pro School Board. We're down there to 2.45 left. Kate Anderson, the man of the hour right now. And free throws are going to be a big deal here. Free throw up, and it is no good. Rebound, Panthers. Pressed into the front court, driving his Hoyt, and he throws it away. Ryder Burke with a steal. Direct shot right there to Ryder. I don't know if he thought his guy was continuing to go down in the corner there, and Ryder just picked that off. Rogers have the ball in the front court. Tied at 61, 2.27 to play. Right side to Rasp with a turn, shoots and misses. Rebound, pulled down by Jake Hoyt, the sophomore for Creston. Deep throw down to Varner, right baseline. 2.14 left. Anson left open, fires the three, missed it. Rebound to Anson, and he throws it down low and off the hands of Burke. Yeah, that was a hard pass there right off kind of the shoulder, hands of Burke there, out of bounds. So Creston's ball here. 2.06 to go. The Panthers have the ball on the baseline. 61-61. Kale Turner will throw it in. Still has it now out top to Anson. Picked up by Pellet. Back out top to Turner. Two minutes left. Tied at 61. Hand off to Parker Varner. Top of the circle. Right side to Kale Turner. Off the screen. Stops. Pops the three. Short. Rebound Pellet for Atlantic. Here come the Trojans. Ryder Burke with it. We're tied at 61-61. Burke bounce pass to Pellet. Left side to Anderson. Baseline Rasmussen. Rasmussen's due for a three-pointer here. <laughs> One thirty to go. We'll see what they do. Anderson Inside to Pellet. And to Pellet. Turn on Jay up. No good. Pellet rebound. Put back. It's good. Pellet. With the bucket, he's got 26. Pellet, Pellet really is, you know, dominated in the un, in the paint there all game. He rebound had, wise and the scoring wise, been open and guys have been feeding him all game. He had six arms around him. That's a good call right there. Foul on Creston, the Atlantic's ball. Atlantic up 63-61. The foul was on Hoyt at the top of the circle. Got an arm out on Rasmussen. Now the Trojans, 105 to go. Yeah, have a chance to make five here. Yeah, they can. They get a two possession game, Cody. Correct. So here we go. Inbounds Burt out top to Anderson. One minute left. 33 of a shot clock. 30 of a shot clock. Less than a minute to go. Ryder Burt top of the circle. To Jaden Pearl. 53 seconds to go. Atlantic by two. And no Anderson. Hits. Oh boy, they're gonna call him for charge. Kind of got stuck there in the corner, tried to come out of the corner and 
That's three on Anderson. <clears throat> well, we're down to 49 seconds to go, and we have a timeout call. We'll take it with them. What a finish. Atlantic up by 260, 361. 49 seconds to play. We're back right after this 30-second timeout at 95.7 FM and live video streamed at westerniowatoday.com. Don't you? After years of wondering why I see more runners than other athletes, I figured it out. Well, a sophomore hurdler explained it to me. This is Dr. Fritz Beyer of Body Basics Chiropractic, and he told me since my hips started knocking up, I lost one second from my time. One second in a 55-second race is less than 2%, but he knew it instantly because the stopwatch told him. In other sports, there's not a stopwatch to tell you when the nagging injury takes 2% from you. To make sure you're giving your 100%, call 254-BODY to get your body back to the basics. Member FDIC. Welcome back to Creston. Both teams still in the get timeout. Atlantic up 63-61. Trojans at 18-16 after one quarter. 39-31 at the halftime break. And then the Panthers outscored Atlantic 20-11 in that third quarter. And we've been fairly even here in the fourth, although Trojans, you take away those Creston threes and... Uh, Atlantic outscored so far Pellet with six, ten points in the fourth quarter. Loney has 26. 49 seconds to go. Preston with the basketball in the front court. Kyle Schreider left wing to Patrick Varner. He's been red hot in the fourth quarter for Preston. Varner on the dribble delivers right baseline for three. No good. Varner got the rebound. Back out top to Strider. New shot clock for Creston, driving in his kill. Turner, layup good. Now we're tied, 63-63. And a timeout called by Creston, Creston again. again. Yeah. We'll take it with them. And we're back right after this. If you need parts or tools for your shop, you'll find it at CarQuest and Atlantic Ag and Auto, your only locally owned parts resource in Atlantic. We have shop air compressors, tools, air tanks, and welding supplies. We can make hydraulic hoses in-house in minutes. As the cold weather takes its toll on engine batteries, we have in stock batteries for big cats to cub cadets. We can get you started. Before or after hours, Atlantic Ag and Auto is your full-service CarQuest parts store. We're on the corner of 7th Street, across from the Lindemann Tractor, and here to serve you, the customer. It will be Atlantic's ball, so now they can go for one shot because there'll be no shot clock. 25 seconds left to play. As we take a look here, again, I mentioned 18-16 Trojans, 39-31 at the halftime break. But then the Panthers came back out and scored 20 points. They led to 51. It was tied at 51-51, I should say, after three. And in this fourth quarter, Carter Pallet with 10 points. Atlantic has scored 13 in the fourth quarter. And Creston has scored 3-6. 8, 10, 12 as well. 63, 63, Pearl will bring it in. Out to Anderson, full court press by Creston. 22 seconds to play. Pearl will bring it across the half court line. Not yet, here's Anderson. Hurry He's got to hurry, he made seconds. it by a second. He made it by a second. Here's Rasmus, we're down to 12 seconds to go. 10 seconds to go, Atlantic will go for one shot. Seven seconds, Rasmus with it, elevates and fires, and it is no good. Rebound Panthers at two, and it, we got a foul call. They're going to call a foul in Atlantic. <laughs> They're all going for the ball, and it's going to be on Atlantic. 63-63. <laughs> so Creston will have Strider at the line. If he makes one of these... He'll probably ice it for the Panthers because there's only 0.6 seconds on the clock. Strider's free throw is no good. Rebound and pull, and we're going to go to overtime. Overtime coming up. We'll be back right after this one-minute timeout on 95.7 FM 
and live streamed on westerniowatoday.com. Get a little extra dough this holiday season at Community First Credit Union. If you're one of the many who need a little extra help this time of year, you're going to love our holiday loan special. We're offering a rate lower than most credit cards, no collateral requirements, and an easy online or in-branch application. This loan is excellent for holiday shopping, consolidating your debt, and more. To apply, stop by your local C-First branch or apply online at c1stcu.com. Com today. Some restrictions supply loans are subject to credit approval, equal housing opportunity. First Windy Bank is the longest standing locally owned bank in Atlantic, and as such, we take pride in how we serve our community. For generations, we have been involved with our customers and their families by getting involved in community events and by supporting technology and teaching financial literacy in our schools. You'll also see our support of athletics on the scoreboards at home events. It's this involvement that allows us to know our customers and their families for generations. First Windy Bank, the only bank you'll ever need. Member FDIC. Your child. Call 800 842 8065 today. That's in town transportation to school for all kids in Atlantic, Harlan, Red Oak, and Glenwood. We're going to play another quarter, <laughs> at least a half a quarter, Cody Weaver. Yeah. 63 63. We owe you a station identification. KS 95.7 is KSWI Atlantic, a proud part of Meredith Communications. KS 95.7. 63-63, four minutes now on the clock for the overtime period. Your score brought to you by the Seed Pros. Here's the jump, and it's controlled by Park Patrick Varner. And the Panthers have the ball to start the overtime period. He'll turn it back out to Kyle Strider. He'll go left side of Patrick Varner. He's had a great second half for Creston. Panthers have a deep left corner to uh, Kale Turner. And he gets it out, left side, shot by Anson for three, missed the shot. Rebound, Parker, Varner gets the board. Nobody blocked out Parker Varner. And it's 65-63, Panthers. Jane Pearl will bring it up the timeline for Atlantic. He'll bring it down the left side, out to Rasmussen. Colton Rasmussen drives in, runner up, no good. Rebound comes off to Parker Varner. Ahead to Patrick Varner. He'll run to the other end, lays it up, and no good foul on Kellett. So the Panthers will go to the free throw line now with a two-point lead here in OT, 65 to 63. And that's four fouls on Carter Pellet. He has 26 points, four fouls, and a bushel basket of rebounds. Patrick Varner's free throw is up, and it is in and out, no good. Varner in the second half with 11 points. His 13th for the game. Varner's second free throw coming up. And it is good. 11 for Varner. Vanek back to the front court. Kenick Jewell across the timeline. Pass right baseline to McLaren. Coach is down by three. Pellet steps out of bounds. They went down low to Pellet, and he stepped out of bounds along the baseline. Panthers have the ball out yeah, of bounds. Yeah, Pellet, Pellet saying, you know, I got pushed out of bounds there. <laughs> so the inbounds by Strider. Kiel Turner will bring it up against the Trojan 1-2-2 zone pressure. Bounce pass to Kiel Turner. Back across to Strider. They break the press. Strider drives in. Baseline almost stolen by Kenny Jewell. And goes out of bounds. Again, we go back to those 50-50 balls. That Atlantic just not able to get here uh, tonight. Anderson in and McLaren comes out. Three-point lead for Creston here at OT. 2.53 to play. 66-63. Inbound scale Turner. Way out top to Kyle Strider. Back to Turner right baseline. He'll take Jewel to the rack. Layup is good. Turner with the bucket. Pass ahead to Pearl. 68-63 Panthers in OT. 2.40 to go. Pearl takes it to the rack, and he is blocking call by Strider. Blocking call on Strider. That should be it for bucket him. Bucket counts. Yep. So he got the bucket. 68-65, and Pearl will shoot. The and that's, one. that's it for Strider. Also, that's five on him. So Strider is out. Pearl's free throw coming up. 
Free throw on the way and in and out, no good. Rebound pulled down by the Panthers. Up by three, two and a half to go in overtime. Rasmussen gets a hand on it, tips out of bounds. 68-65, Creston leads. 2.28 to go in OT. Hill, Turnable throw it in for the half-court line. Looks for a cutter, gets it out top to Parker Varner. Back out top to Patrick Varner. Now he'll roll over to Kale Turner. 2.20 left. 22 on the shot clock. Turner out to Patrick Varner on the drive inside. Cut out by Rasmussen. Now back to Parker Varner. Good D by Pearl. He'll lip it left side to Logan. No good. Rebound Atlantic. A left baseline shot. And a foul on Creston there. <laughs> Cale Turner called with the foul, and that'll put Rasmussen on the free throw line with 2.07 to play and a 68-65 Panther lead. So Rasmussen will step up for the Trojans. Old Rasmussen with seven points tonight. Free throw is good. The guy can shoot free throws. Perfect last Tuesday against Clarenda. I think he went 11 for 11 at the free throw line. 68-66 Panthers, second free throw is in and out, no good. And the rebound, Creston, with a two point lead during the two minute mark to play in overtime. 68-66, here's Turner down low, Anson layup good. Wide open there. Just sitting down that low block. 70-66, Panthers by four. Rasmussen out top for the Trojans, dribbles down the right side, lose the ball out of bounds. Timeout called by Atlantic, the 30-second timeout, and we're back right after this on 95.7 FM. It is the holiday season, so it is tis the time for a great deal from Olson's BP in Atlantic. Your December special, get $3 off a large specialty Godfather's pizza. And it tis the season to be jolly, so what better way to make yourself jolly than to save some extra money and have a great go-to dinner this holiday season. Your December special at Olson's BP, get $3 off any large specialty Godfather's pizza from Olson's BP, the Keep You Going store. To crest him in overtime. Panthers up 70 to 66. Game was tied. 61-61. They're going into overtime. And now Atlantic calls a timeout. Still a lot of time here either way. 143 to go. Coach Bryce Schaefer bring a keeping his squad a little bit longer that time out as he diagrams what he wants them to do. They'll have the basketball. Second half, it's Kyle Strider and Patrick Varner provided the offensive fuel for this squad. Preston will have the ball out of bounds. It'll be thrown in by Wiley. Dekeel Turner, 140 to go. Panthers up by four, 70-66. Wide open, Anson down low, layup good. My goodness, that puts the Panthers up 72-66. Anderson to Pearl. Pearl behind the line, back to Anderson, high and right. Now uh, Kenny Jewell drives in, runner off the glass, no good. Rebound, Rasmus and his put back is missed. Panthers rebound, here comes Varner. He'll take it all the way in, layup good, 74-66. Panthers up big. One minute to go. Anderson, top of the circle. He'll take it to the rack. Layup. Good. Kane Anderson with the layup. He has 12 points. Another timeout is called. And we'll take it with him. 58 seconds to play. Panthers 74 68 over Atlantic in overtime. We're back right after this 30 second timeout. Olson's Outdoor Power is your one-stop service and equipment shop for all things outdoor. We sell the best power sports products in the business from Polaris, Can-Am, Sea-Doo, and Ski-Doo, trailers to tackle any job from H&H, Triton, and Wilson, and we continue to lead the way in lawn and garden equipment with great products from Exmark, Dixie Chopper, Husqvarna, Cub Cadet, Steel, and Echo. Add factory trained technicians in two locations, and it's easy to see why Olson's Outdoor Power is the leader in all things outdoor. Olson's Outdoor Power, your one-stop service and equipment shop with locations in Atlantic and Carroll. 
Welcome back to Creston, 74-68, Panthers by six. 58 seconds to go for the Trojans. They're going to need a three ball here, Cody. Coach Hall visiting with the official. Here comes Creston out. They'll have the ball out of bounds with 58 seconds to go. 74-68, six-point lead for the Panthers. Wiley will throw it in. And the stack, and he'll get it in to Gail Turner. Turner with the ball with 55 seconds to go. Hustles across the timeline on the dribble to back out top to Parker Barner. Right side of Kill Turner, 48 seconds left. 74-68. Patrick Barner, 19 the shot clock. They've got a lot of time. 41 on the game clock at overtime, and Anderson fighting with a foul. 38 seconds left. Both teams to the double bonus here down the stretch. And the free throws, uh, Parker Varner. 6'3", sophomore with eight points tonight. Two from beyond the arc. 74-68, crest, and we're an OT. Parker Varner puts it up and missed the shot. Missed the free throw. First free throw of the night for Parker Varner. He was one for two. He's only... That's just his third free throw attempt the first couple of games, first three games of the season. Second free throw on the way, and that is missed. Rebound pellet for Atlantic. Here come the Trojans. They need a quick bucket, 30 seconds to play in overtime. Rasmussen Anderson. He'll drive it in. Layup is good. And we had a foul before that, I believe. A foul is going to be called on Crest before Anderson's dribble drive. It'll be against the Panthers on Pellet, so Pellet will take to the free throw line. Parker Varner called for the foul underneath the basket. Pellet at the free throw line, he has 26 points. Free throw is up and good. 27 for Pellet. 74-69, 28 seconds to play. Harder Pellet needs to make this free throw to give Atlantic at least a prayer here. Second free throw, good. Pellet made them both. 74-70 in overtime. Creston with the ball, and they call a quick foul on Atlantic with 25 seconds to go. On the entry pass. So the Panthers will march to the free throw line. Two possession game now. Kale Turner will shoot at the line. We're in overtime. It was 61-61. Hill Turner looks at the rim, pushes it up. Good. Turner has three points in the OT period. 75 70, crested by five. 25 seconds to go in overtime. Second free throw by Turner is on the way, and it is no good. Rebound pellet for Atlantic. We got a foul call to the Panthers. So okay, uh, Carter Pellet will shoot again. He has 28 points in this game. He's coming off a 21 rebound performance on Tuesday against Clorinda. And he's battling this one. Trojans only one three point shot here tonight. They have not attempted that many. Free throw by Pellet, no good. Score sticks at 75 70. Preston here in overtime. 24 seconds to play. Corner Pellet eyes the rim. Free throw is spun up and it's good. 29 for Pellet. And we got a whistle. Timeout called by Creston. 24 seconds left. We'll take one 30 second timeout. And so we're back with more 95.7 FM and live video streaming at westerniowatoday.com. At Second Street Auto, it's our mission to get you back on the road fast. And it all starts with free local towing. Once you're back at the shop, we talk you through your car repair with a free and fair estimate. We do everything in-house so you know who's working on your car. Our Hercules tires come with free road hazard repair, free rotation for the life of the tires, and a free alignment check. And nobody can beat our transmission rebuild and repair experts. Brakes, tune-ups, oil changes, preventative maintenance, and service work make Second Street your first stop. Preston, 75-71 Panthers with 24 seconds uh, left to play here, Cody. And uh, 
quite a ball game. There have been a lot of ebbs and flows in this game as well. So the Panthers will have the basketball up by four, 75-71. Inbounds will be Wiley. In their backcourt, Atlantic lines up on a man-to-man defense. Wiley looks for a break. Gets it into Kale Turner. Turner ahead to Varner, and he got a foul call on Atlantic in the backcourt. Two shots for Creston, down 22 seconds left to go. Just three seconds off the clock. Trojans coming off a win over Clement on Tuesday, and the Panthers coming off a win over St. Albert. They lost their first game on the 28th, the winner set. Free throw by Turner is good. Turner is four points in this overtime period, 76-71. Panthers lost the winner set to beat St. Albert. Second free throw is good. 22 seconds left in overtime, 77-71, Creston. Here comes uh, Pearl, layup is good. Uh, Pearl goes coast to coast. Timeout Atlantic, 77-73. In overtime is Jaden Pearl with four points in this extra period. We're going to have a full timeout by Coach Hall. We'll take a 30-second timeout, and we'll be back right after this from Atlantic Ag and Auto. So our first you need parts or tools for your shop, you'll find it at CarQuest and Atlantic Ag and Auto, your only locally owned parts resource in Atlantic. We have shop air compressors, tools, air tanks, and welding supplies. We can make hydraulic hoses in-house in minutes. As the cold weather takes its toll on engine batteries, we have in stock batteries for big cats to cub cadets. We can get you started. Before or after hours, Atlantic Ag and Auto is your full-service CarQuest parts store. We're on the corner of 7th Street, across from the Lindemann Tractor, and here to serve you, the customer. 15 seconds left. Creston up 77-73 in overtime. They have the basketball out of bounds in the backcourt. And the break. Inbounds to Patrick Varner. And foul called on Rasmussen. 14 seconds to go, so Varner will take to the free throw line. Patrick Varner had two points in the first half, and he kind of really came to life in the second half. He had 10, 11 second half points. 13 for the game. And he'll shoot free throws. First one on the way. Good. 14 for Varner. 78-73, 78-73, Creston here in overtime with 14 seconds to play on the Seed Pro scoreboard. Second free throw by Varner is uh, split up, and it is good. Patrick Varner. Five points in overtime. Lennox with it, Pella down low, shut off the glass, no good. Rebound battle for Pella comes up with it, puts it back up, and good! Pella with 31. 79-75, and the time runs out. And Creston wins this one tonight in OT. 79-75. We'll take a two-minute timeout. We're back with a post game here in just a little bit on 95.7 FM in our live video stream at westerniowatoday.com. From start to finish, let Aiken Design Center help you with your kitchen or bathroom ideas. For new designs or remodels, Aiken Design Center will work with you or your contractor to make your dream a reality. If you're not sure what you want, stop into our showroom so our custom designers can help you find what will suit your needs as well as your budget. The Aiken Design Center staff is committed to quality design while meeting your needs. Stop into Aiken today to find out how we can help. Cass Health in Atlantic, Iowa is a nationally recognized hospital and we are proud of the awards and all of our recent accomplishments. But do you know what drives us to be the very best? You. We're passionate about helping our patients heal and feel their very best at any age and any stage of life. Cass Health, neighbors caring for neighbors. 
First Windy Bank is the longest standing locally owned bank in Atlantic, and as such, we take pride in how we serve our community. For generations, we have been involved with our customers and their families by getting involved in community events and by supporting technology and teaching financial literacy in our schools. You'll also see our support of athletics on the scoreboards at home events. It's this involvement that allows us to know our customers and their families for generations. First Windy Bank, the only bank you'll ever need. Member FDIC. Live video streaming on westerniowatoday.com is courtesy of Nishnanet, offering always fast internet with no gimmick pricing to select rural areas of Cass and Audubon counties. Nishnanet is a local company with local technicians and offers unlimited data on most of their internet plans. Learn more about Nishnanet and their services and products by going to their website at nishnanet.com. Nishnanet.com, technically awesome. The game had a lot of ebbs and flows to it. Atlantic held the lead early, 39 to 31 at halftime, but the Panthers outscored Atlantic 20 to 11 in that third quarter. They just kind of kept that momentum, Cody Weaver, all the way to the end, and then uh, able to outscore the Trojans in that uh, final stanza. They had one, two, three, four field goals, eight, and then they went uh, made four free throws. So they had uh, 12 points that overtime period. Atlantic did, and the Panthers had that uh, absolutely scored uh, eight. And uh, 10, 13, 15 in that final frame, Cody, to win this uh, ball game over the Trojans. So your thoughts on this wild uh, one tonight? I mean, well, I mean, if you look at the first half, uh, you know, it's it, to me it was controlled by Atlantic inside. Um, and then the second half, uh, once Creston kind of took the lead, you know, went back and forth for a little bit. And you didn't see a lot of three-point shots by Atlantic or many attempts, but the inside was open there, you know, and Creston hit some big threes, and they were up by six at one point. Atlantic, you know, came back two at a time and tied it up to go into overtime. Had a chance there, you know, a couple times towards the end of the game. Um, couldn't capitalize on those chances, and then, uh, you know, in the overtime, it was pretty much all Creston. Atlantic head coach Derek Hall will join us here on the post-game show. Uh, coming up here, our post-game show is brought to you by Cass Health. Neighbors caring for neighbors. Talk to Coach Hall right after this from Cass Ear, Health. Nose, and Cass Health in Atlantic, Iowa is a nationally recognized hospital. And we are proud of the awards and all of our recent accomplishments. But do you know what drives us to be the very best? You. We're passionate about helping our patients heal and feel their very best at any age, and any stage of life. Cass Health, neighbors caring for neighbors. Welcome back uh, to our post-game show brought to you by Cass Health, neighbors caring for neighbors. Atlantic head coach Derek Hall joining us, 79-75. Creston wins an overtime coach. Uh, what a ball game tonight. Both teams just playing their hearts out. Uh, summarize it for us a little bit, and we'll get into more detail. Uh, you know, they just made more little plays. Um, they did the little things. They got more loose balls, more offense rebounds. Um, they hit some more shots from the outside. Uh, they kind of started off the year slow at Winterset. I think they were like two for 22 from three, but then they hit 10 threes the other night against St. Albert, and they probably hit another 10 um, tonight against us. So, you know, their shooters found a rhythm. Um, we just got to be better closing out there and making it tough for them. Um, I didn't think our help defense, gap defense, was, was very good tonight. Um, so we got to tighten that up, get ready for Kemper on Tuesday night. But, you know, they just did the little things. They outworked us. They out-hustled us. Um, and if you don't um, work harder than your opponent in the Hawkeye 10 on the road, you're going to lose. So we got to learn from it. It's interesting. We talked about those, I call them 50-50 balls, but those loose balls uh, down, it just seemed like we just wouldn't go our just, way. Yeah, we could just, just seemed like them. they got every single one. <laughs> I know it. Um, so I was just dying for one of them. Uh, we did not take a charge tonight, which I was pleading for those. So we got to be better there. Um, just kind of step in, sacrifice our body. You know, my old coach, Coach Lyons, always said, charges can change games. So they're uh -huh. game changers right there, and we just didn't get one tonight. Um, we didn't execute down the stretch there. Uh, we had some good looks. We just didn't execute. So we just got to learn from it. We've talked about, and you attacked the rim well. You'd like to see a few more long-range shots, though, huh? I don't know. We dominated the paint. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Um, we just, we literally, it was just came down to, we missed some free throws, yeah, um, but we just kind of didn't get the 50-50 balls, um, and then we were kind of shying away from the paint there in the fourth, late fourth quarter and overtime um, when, when we kind of lived in the paint at the rim the entire rest of the game. So 
It's got to be better. Carter Pellant, uh, despite the loss, another big night to over 30, what, 31 points, I believe, on the game. And coming off a 21 rebound game on Tuesday. Yeah, you know, Carter was a warrior down there. I thought Jackson played really well, too. Um, we kind of had to play through those two guys tonight. So credit to those guys. Um, they kept us in the game. So we just got to be better everywhere else. Um, you know, I thought Caden Anderson yeah. was aggressive tonight. He was great. He's kind of coming out of his shell, been pleading for that. <laughs> um, so that's a positive thing there. thought Ryderberg gave us some good minutes there. Um, but our guards just had to be a little more aggressive to shoot. Um, Colton didn't really um, have his best night tonight, and that's okay. Um, he'll get that rolling here soon. He, I, I thought at the end of regulation, we did a four low set with him, and he crossed a guy up, and he had a wide open jumper that he's going to hit 80% of the time, yeah. and he just missed it. So that could have won the game, been done right there, but just didn't fall in, and it happens. Kemp run Tuesday, and uh, you just load up and go again. Yep, you know, another good team coming to town, so we just got to be um, ready to go for those guys. Very good. Glad to see you healthy. We miss you, Clarinda, on Tuesday night. A great performance by your team, by the way. Yeah, I know. First game I ever missed in my life. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, no, our, guy, our guys played great down in Clarinda. Glad we could get the win. Uh, tough luck we didn't get the win tonight. Um, wish we could have. So, you know, hopefully we bounce back, and I think we will. Very good. Coach, thanks for stopping by. We'll see you Tuesday in the Kemper game. Yep, thanks a bunch. Derek Cole, head coach of the Atlantic Trojans post game, brought to my Cass Health Neighbors Caring for neighbors. Ear, nose, and throat doctor, Rick Reinhardt, cares for... From start to finish, let Aiken Design Center help you with your kitchen or bathroom ideas. For new designs or remodels, Aiken Design Center will work with you or your contractor to make your dream a reality. If you're not sure what you want, stop into our showroom so our custom designers can help you find what will suit your needs as well as your budget. The Aiken Design Center staff is committed to quality design while meeting your needs. Stop into Aiken today to find out how we can help. 75, the Panthers over the Trojans, uh, Carter Pellet uh, with uh, 31 points to lead all scores for Atlantic. But, you know, Cody, uh, like we mentioned uh, during the game, and, and Coach uh, also mentioned it during the postgame show, that it came down to a lot of things. Uh, the help defense, I think, was one of those things that we saw. There were some wide open looks uh, for the Panthers on some some backdoor plays and some help defense and, and the 50-50 balls. But otherwise, well, Atlantic really battled the paint, probably controlled the paint as coach. Uh, yeah, Hall, the actually. whole game, I, I felt inside was owned by Atlantic. Um, you know, they, they pressed us pretty much the whole game, maybe released a little bit there in the second half. But... They pressed us all the way down the court each time, um, but the middle was always open. You know, Carter was there, or Jackson was there, um, Hotsey was there. There was people in paint all night long that were open and, you know, kind of able to get an easy layup. Another good battle with Atlantic and Creston here tonight. The uh, Panthers student section was certainly in it uh, here this evening, and uh, both teams are playing their hearts out. And the Panthers come out the winner 79 to 75. Atlantic will host Kemper on Tuesday, and we'll have the broadcast right here on the radio at 95.7 FM and the live video streamed on westerniowatoday.com. Uh, that'll do it for the broadcast. Cody, thanks a bunch. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you on Tuesday in Atlantic. Pre-game starting at 545, tip-off at 6 for the girls' game with the boys' game to follow. Thanks for joining us on our live stream and on the radio. Have a great weekend. Have a safe weekend. Good night from Creston. Uh -huh.